Um, I don't really know, know where to begin here. We were, before I walked in here, we were talking about Easter. Easter. Might be, I mean, take all the religious stuff out of it. Might be one of the worst holidays. I don't get the purpose. I, I'm still trying to figure out the egg part. Granted, this I'm trying to figure this out as a Jewish person who has little to no intel on what goes on at Easter anyway. Do you even do, do Jews get I, now? I don't know much about Jews. Do Jews get an Easter basket? No, we'll definitely do not get an Easter basket. Nothing. No. Well, because the reason I, it's you laugh, but it's funny because I know some. I have some Jewish friends who on Christmas they get a gift. They still do Hanukkah, but you know they they'll have Christmas trees up and they you know. Like they kind of, it's kind of a hybrid of Christmas Hanukkah. How come they're doing that? I think because it's an American tradition, you know. Just want to feel. Oh, normal. is it? Oh, is it? So I'm not American now. I'm not saying that, uh, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Be you could, time. you, you wouldn't kill you if you had an Easter basket. Wouldn't be the first time you've called me a terrorist on this podcast. This is true. You've never got a uh, a, a box, a, a four piece of Cadbury eggs. No, I'm, I've I've never had a Cadbury egg. Let me drop that one on you for Is a second. Is that for reals? I'm pretty sure. And if I have, I don't remember it. You are real ice ISIS. I mean, right. this is crazy, man. Hey, man, come over, come over to my Passover situation this Saturday. That'll blow your is it a party? Easter shit out of the is water. Is it a party? What? Did, what? You, but what? Delicious, you, delicious foods like matzah. Do you know what matzah is? Is it a soup? It's just dry ass bread. <laughs> Way off. Oh, is it a juicy <laughs> soup? Uh, dry bread, Brendan. <laughs> dry ass bread. <laughs> um. So what do you – pass? what exactly is Passover? Do you know? I'm going to tell – you're a Jew IQ. <laughs> You've heard of GQ? This is GQ. Juq. Jupiter. Juq. All right. My Juq is telling me that I believe Passover – Passover is basically like the civil rights movement for Jews. It's like when they got out of slavery in Egypt. That's what Passover celebrates. Okay, and then is it one day, or do you guys one carry night. it on like you do Hanukkah? One night. It's just one big, and then, one, like, you get together, like, Christmas dinner? Yeah, kind of. That sounds cool. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's a little bit, it's a lot more low-key than, uh, than Christmas is. Like, you don't get, like, these crazy, like, presents, or, or there's definitely no trees being brought from outside into the house. Do I don't get, I don't Do you get, get gifts? For Passover? Yeah. No. Nothing. No. No special traditions. It's just a, it's a hang with your family holiday. You can wear whatever you want. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm definitely not like rocking a uh, rocking traditional Jewish garb or anything. Do you wear a yarmulke? I haven't worn a yarmulke since I was probably like 12. You bet your ass you're going to this weekend. Uh, 100%. Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Did, now, do they make like cool yarmulkes? I'm, you know, I, this is the first time. This is no. the first time I've ever legitimately sat down with a Jew and asked these legit questions. All right, let me, let me now, now, for you. Yeah, but, but, but is Jew offensive to call you Jew? Is that offensive or no? I mean, it probably depends who you're asking, but for me, no. What what terms should people use? And you know, like, you can't Jewish. call, you can't call a, you want to call a midget a small person. I would, I think you're safe just going with, a, you're, you're a Jewish person. Okay, so. Just go with Jewish and you're fine. It's no. just the ish. It's like uh, dropping the hard, dropping the R off the N-bomb. It just softens it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't use that word. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, we do not condone the use no. of the M-bomb in any circumstance on the fighter and the kid. Hashtag Evan Beard the racist. No, uh, you know what? So with the yarmulkes, though, they make, like, cool ones, uh, like dope ones. Dope yarmulkes. I mean, should, I went to, should we make fire and the kid yarmulkes? I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed at all. I went to Israel um, two years ago, and they had – like every American sports team made into a yarmulke. They also had like, they also had some weird ones. Like it was really America. They had like like Popeye the Sailor. And can you can wear those now? Is there special yarmulkes you wear to to church? It's not called church. What do you guys call it? Temple. <laughs> really? Yeah. No idea. Did you know this, Special K? Are you Jewish? No. What are you? I'm like Christian. Eh, that means you're. That's the best holiday of them all. Nah, it's not. The hell's going on? Hold on. You, your family only celebrates Thanksgiving. No Christmas. Wow, your mom. 
mom sounds like Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> so when Christmas comes, you guys wake up and do what? My parents see that on Christmas Day. Yeah. My dad does too, but we open gifts and uh, sit around a Christmas tree and eat breakfast yeah. together like some goddamn Americans. Yeah, no, we do the same thing minus the gifts, and we just go see like Fast and the Furious. Yes, there you go. How's that? How's that for an American holiday? I'll tell you what, man, Americans, Americans, <laughs> tell you what, you guys are. We need to keep it traditional, man. <laughs> we need to keep it traditional. So can I can I wear a, a like a Justin Bieber yarmulke to temple? For sure. I can wear whatever I want. It does not matter. Yeah. So, so if I'm the Kim K of uh, the You're, Jewish you know religion, what? can I wear a bedazzled one? Have like stuff hanging off of it? What's my limitations I mean, here? There, I don't think there are any limitations. Like no one's gonna. Pro- you're probably not gonna get called out for it. People may be like, eh, "That bedazzled yarmulke is a little much." Too much. But I mean, if you make you make a fighter and the kid yarmulke, I'll wear it once and then set it on fire. <laughs> and then set, oh, damn. <laughs> I uh, I was once uh, up for this show. I won't name the show, but I was up for the show, and we're in the production meeting, and we're all sitting around. And this is a uh, like a not not a UFC thing, nothing. This is a legit show on VH1 or E, one of those networks. And I'm sitting with the production meeting, uh, Hollywood, and they're going around, and you know, this is the third time I've met with them. Everything's going good. It looks like I got the gig. I'm not making this up. They're going around. They're talking. Something, some Jewish holiday was coming up. Something like that. They're going around like, "Hey, job, what are you doing for?" I forget what holiday it was. And I was like, "Excuse me, like, what, what are you doing?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm not Jewish." And literally, the guy was like, "What?" I'm like, yeah. He's like, "You're not Jewish?" I'm like, "No, man." I'm like, okay. I could tell it was just like that was the straw on the camel's back. <laughs> I, I literally, I was like, "Damn!" I left there. I was like, "God, I should have said I was Jewish." Yep. Yep. What can you do, man? What can you do? Let's go to current events. Current events with Evan the body, the beard, and a yamaga. <laughs> um, how about the the fire in the kid shop dot com? Oh, I got a beast on my hands, guys. I have a beast. It's a good problem to have. I every order I order more, I order more, I order more. I thought this last order would last a month. I thought, you know what? We ordered so many, it's going to last a month. Nope. Abbott Kenny sold out. I think there's a couple, I think you'd be surprised shirts left. There's going to be more coming out in like two or three days. Not because, oh, we're re-releasing them, but uh, UPS lost one of the boxes of the maroon. I think you'd be surprised. So we're missing like the small, medium, and larges in that. So those have come some random-ass time. So I don't know when they'll be on the site, but they'll be there. But it is, I can't thank you guys enough. It's crazy to me. Crazy. Crazy how much Fire in the Kid merchandise is walking around these days. Crazy. Love you guys. All right, Ev, let's get to these current events. All right. First one, this is really relevant to you right now since you just got a brand new, brand new car. Car of your dreams. Got that beautiful red Porsche. Yeah. Well, this guy had a $450,000 Ferrari. A nice 599 GTO. Valets it. This, no. This is, and this is how the valet. Wait, first it. of all, where is this at? This is in Italy. Dang. In Rome. This is how the valet returns it. Where Ferraris are. No. Crashes it through a storefront window because he confused the brake first with of the all, accelerator. The headline says valet confuses the brake with the accelerator in a $450,000 Ferrari. Completely just, I mean, it's on drivable is not even the word to explain this thing. <laughs> it's just, it drove it through a fucking storefront window. It's How shit. do you do that? The thing is in pieces. Who pays for that? Who pays I, for that? The hotel? Because he's an employee of the hotel? Or does he I, find a non. Well, the, I, the, the hotel's got to have an insurance policy out for their valets. The it's thing. For, they have to cover themselves in case of like a complete catastrophe like this. This is what's tricky. So that Ferrari right there, you you can't just walk into a Ferrari dealer and there's going to be one of those for sale. There's a waiting list. There's a crazy waiting list. You're talking about, especially in Italy, you're not just going to be like, oh, okay, we'll get. It's not like you're driving a freaking, you know, Dodge freaking Dakota or Dodge Durango, Dakota, Dodge Durango. 
where you can just go into the dealership and like, hey, all right, homeboy crashed the black one. Give me the maroon one. It doesn't work like that. So that's going to take some time. 110% that valet driver, you have to fire him. He can never be around cars again. It's oh, yeah. like if you molest a little kid, can't hang around elementary schools. Guess what? You can't hang around Ferraris, my man. You can't hang around Porsches anymore. You lost your privilege. Are you scared of valeting your car? Does it, does it I, cross your mind? I hate valeting my car. Yeah. I cannot stand when someone else drives my car. I hate it. I Actually, now, especially with my Porsche, because I, I care so much about it, I'll think about what I have to do during the day. And if I have to be like in a crowded area or... Um, I have, you know, or if I'll work out, won't have a chance to change. I'll drive my Prius because I don't want to get in my Porsche sweaty, or I don't want someone else driving it. Yeah. So the struggle is real. I have to say something to my dad because the car is low, and for my dad getting out, for the passengers, there's no steering wheel to get out for big guys. So he was grabbing the window. He was grabbing the window and yank it up. I let one go. You know, I was like, oh, dang. Second time I go, hey. Hey, Dad, is there any way you could maybe, I don't know, get out the car without putting all 240 pounds on my window? Do you think you could do that? He's like, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, man. You not, better be. <laughs> not cool. Not cool, Papa Shab. Not cool. What sucks for you, too, is since you're so big, your seat's got to be pretty far back. Every person that you ever, every valet you ever give it to is probably going to be, like, a foot shorter than you. Dude, and it drives, it drives and me nuts. your seat's going to be a whole... It's going to take you 10 minutes to roll back when you get in. This is, it drives this, me nuts. This, people do that this is my time. thing. This is my thing. This, this, is, this is where this is going to go down a weird road. But the amount of trust we put into other human beings is insane. Is insane. Think of just Just hear me out here. Just hear me out. Valet in your car is one thing. All right, it's your dream car. You literally punch guys in the face and sing dick songs every day to pay for this car. On a podcast. That's how I pay for a uh, brand new Porsche. Whatever. Hard work. A lot of years to do this. Took me a very long time to get to this point in my life. Things are good. Now, all that hard work in this car, I'm going to give the keys to this 22-year-old working at uh, Maestro's off Malibu. I'm going to give him the keys. I'm going to give him the keys. I'm going to assume he's going to do the right thing and just park it right there. And then I go inside for... I don't know. It's guaranteed I'm being there for at least an hour and a half. So he has his keys. All right. That's for whatever. Dream car you give him to valet service. That's fine. I get that. How about this one? How about that pilot, the, the German pilot, who wasn't cleared to fly from his uh, psychologist, wherever. They said he's un, unfit to fly because he's batshit crazy and wants to kill himself. So then he crashes the plane with everyone in it. Again. Again. Hear me out on this. When you board a plane, you assume the man flying the plane has his shit together. If for some odd reason he doesn't, we're all dying. But when you get on your Southwest flight, your Virgin Air, whatever, United, we're assuming these pilots are, 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 are just there. They're normal. They're, they're doing their job. Again, we're putting this trust in them. All right, here's another one for you. Here's another one for you. How about... How about this one? How about when you're at an uh, amusement park? You're assuming the guy doing the 16-year-old the, the with pepperoni face and just ate seven churros and has nacho cheese all over his fingers, you assume he's going to run this thing correctly. You assume he's going to take this fast-moving metal object on wheels on a track and he's going to run it smoothly. Oh, yeah, and then you got to assume the guy – in charge of creating the roller coaster has his shit together otherwise you're gonna fall off and die and if that's not enough and I'll end the tangent here if that's not enough how about when you bungee jump how about when you bungee jump in other countries what you're assuming the guy who set up this rig on a bridge thousands of feet above the air you assume he has what his degree in engineering in safety precautions of bungee jumping, he has his black belt in bungee jumping. So, so you're there with your family. You pay this guy a hundred dollars, and you're putting your life in your hand with these the carabiners, this bridge, the whole setup. When you think of the world like that, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. You have trust issues, and that's why. That's exactly why I don't think of the world like that. I'm just I saying. I'm scared of doing everything. Everything. 
But in the, for the most part, you can trust people. Because think, think how many flights are in the world. Think how many flights yeah. every day. Think how many people jump out of planes skydiving. That's a bad idea, man. And and, and this is my thing. Did it anyway. I was in Costa Rica with my ex, and she wanted to bungee jump off this Costa Rican. Just this this makeshift sand lot, just thing put together over, over uh, this giant Costa Rica mountain. Again, I have to explain to her pros and cons, and do we trust the guy who's sunburned as fuck, the white guy from Milwaukee who moved to Costa Rica because he, what it, for whatever reason, was lost in life and decided to set up this makeshift bungee jump. Pros why, and cons. Why you got to make him sunburn? He was super he's sunburned, just, man. He was like, so are you taking a shot at, at, at me? <laughs> no, he's just super <laughs> white. Got sunburned, I'll go out for Venice true. one time, get sunburned. It's true, man. It's true. I assume, though, you would have sunscreen stuff if you moved to Costa Rica. But again... Pros and cons, man. What's what's the this is the way I live my life. What's the pro of jumping out of plane? Go. Give me the pros. Really fun. Fun. What else is that it? Yeah. Fun. You ready for the con? You die. <laughs> oh. Oh, what's the what's the con? Oh, there's only one. You die. That's that's the con to getting in your car every day. No, 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 no. That you, you kind of have to do to, to make a life for yourself. That's, that's whatever. That you, ha- you have to get okay, to work. Jumping out of a plane for fun. Okay. So the, on the fun meter, it's an eight. Cool. Guess what is on the death meter? It's a ten. <laughs> that's the way I, I when, when it comes to uh, outside activities, that's the way I weigh things. That shit must be boring as fuck. Jumping out of planes is nothing to me, man. Have you ever done it? No, to the hell no. You know the no, weight no, limit's no, 225. No, you know the weight limit's 225. Oh, okay. Well, you'll be able to make that one to you. <laughs> you can do that during fight week. <laughs> yeah. Pros and cons, my man. Pros and cons. Wasn't even that fun. No, right? And then think about... I found it to be pretty underwhelming, actually. There you go. Yeah. And, and look at the con. Death. Yeah. Death. People ah, don't look. People whatever. don't look at it like that. They go, we've jumped a thousand YOLO. times. YOLO. <laughs> we've jumped a thousand times. And then they always say this. You're more likely to, to get hit by a car or, or die driving to work. That's because we do it every day. Guess what? If we have to jump out of a plane to get to work every day, the death rate's going to go way up for jumping out of a plane. Same thing with sharks. Oh, you're, you're more likely to die in a car wreck than to get eaten by a shark. I get that. We live on land. We drive cars every day. Oh, now, it's pretty big. Now, if we were swimming to work every day in shark-infested waters, those numbers are going to go very, very high. Those statistics are stupid. Carry on, F. Next event. <laughs> Moral of the story, don't trust very, anyone but yourself. Yeah, seriously. Jesus. Paranoia. Relax, relax man. <laughs> <laughs> relax, it. enjoy life. As I'm in. As I'm Opposed in. to lifting weights, you get strong. Cons, you drop the weight in your head and you break your neck and you die. It's true. It's Calm true. Down. Calm down. Jeez, man, relax. It's just a podcast. It's just a podcast, bro. <laughs> right. Um, Let's change it up. Let's uh, let's get some titties in the mix. Never matter. Seth. <laughs> Take old bitties. Solid segue there. Yeah, it is. Smooth, the really. Yeah, very. Smooth. Yeah. Um, there's a video clip going around. I'll show you right now. Of this crying little boy who's meeting Nicki Minaj. He's making Nicki Minaj's biggest fan. And... I mean, it's, it's tough to, to, to go around the edge here, but he appears to probably be a little, a little gay kid, which is fine. We're all about that here. Yeah, I'm, well, yeah. I'm not mad at it. Uh, yeah. I'm not mad at it. I, I don't care. Not mad at it. But you would assume that someone who's that, like, this big of a crying little boy, Nicki Minaj fan, probably gay kid. And then this happens. Sucks on her titty. I, I, I do that. Nicki Minaj is one bad man of gamma. So he's crying, kid with glasses, looks like my brother in fourth grade. He's white as shit, crying. Oh, tell me he kisses her titty. She's hugging him. Do you see his face? What do you do? <laughs> he gets in, his head, his, the second his face hits titties, he just like, gives this like... Just a little squeeze. Let me no, see it like, again. Oh, yeah. Let me see it again. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not mad at Nicki Minaj at all. I wonder what's real. He just gives like fake. a little wink to the camera and everything. He's just like, yeah, I faked this whole crying thing just to get up in her face. 
Oh, I, oh, tight move. You know what he did? That's he, savvy. That, that's, that's beast mode. You know what he did? He did the uh, the Will the Will Ferrell from Wedding Crashers. Damn you, Derek. <laughs> Damn you. And they look over. He's like, uh, 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 uh. that's what he did. <laughs> tight move, kid. Classic Will Ferrell. Classic. That's a tight move from a little kid. It is. There's all this bullshit who, crying. And who Nicki reposted? Did, Nick, did Nicki Minaj repost that yeah. or no? Oh, she did? Yeah, she did. She said is he's he gonna, is he yeah. tagged in it? Um, no, he's not tagged in it. But you said, look at how he stopped crying when he laid his head on them things. They have real power beam out of them that can cure the sick. <laughs> <laughs> Still look at them titties though. Nice, nice twist. Yeah, didn't see it coming. I'm not mad at that little dork. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest, kid's a bona fide dork. But he's the talk of his school, at least today. Yeah. That's that's a good point. That's the street cred. That's that's gonna bump up your street. Oh, he just got a pro- he got a prom date for sure. Oh yeah, right out of that, he's you probably say, got a prom date for the next four you years. You say how old he is? Uh, nope. But I mean, that what that kid can't be older than fourteen. It's hard to tell these days, man. I can't tell age anymore. I can't either. You look somewhere between like twenty two and forty to me. I can't. I, I agree. I literally. Can't oh, tell. I agree. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. You get to a certain age where you just can't tell. I was around high school kids. I don't know why. I was around high school kid. Yeah. <laughs> might, want, might want to put some context in Yeah, right? Uh, and they look so young, it's insane. Or college, even college kids, like I run at UCLA, when I run around UCLA, I mean, these kids are, I mean, they look young as hell. Yeah, they're like, are they 14? Are they 26? I don't know. Tell you what, if you're a single young man and you run around that campus, you better be, you better be careful. <laughs> what you guys talking about? Oh, look, who's oh, here. look who it, it is. Look, look what he's wearing. Kitty, kitty, wow. boss. Hey, hey, black hey, shirt, Brian. same green pants. I'm not, I'm not mad at this. Yeah, yeah. Look, look at this. this. Black and green connection All green. Just up. for everyone here, so Evan has a green long sleeve shirt on, black V neck. Yeah. Swish K, green shirt on. Brian, the standard issue, black, black V neck, same green jeans you wore on Monday. Yeah. You I've just wearing you these just love for, them, huh? Well, I've been wearing these pants for you way too on? long. If you have sandals on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna punch nope, you. No, no, we've got boots on, but. But wearing these wearing these pants now for um, just too long. I mean, it's a point where you know you I do get... the same thing though. If I like a pair of pants, I wear them every day. Just wear I wore ca- these camo pants I got. I was obsessed with them. Probably three weeks in a row. Yeah. I look like it was like I was part of the military. Or you look like you belong in. Or a, I look like in a bathhouse. Or I look like Guile from Street Fighter. Oh. Mm, you or, don't know who that is. Or you look like a big. Hey smooth. Brian, what were you doing? Fucked off. Excuse me. What were you doing? Glad you asked. I was uh, in the dentist chair. I had uh, my tooth crumbled. Um, I'm old. And, Which uh, tooth? Uh, this one here crumbled, and they had to uh, just like re- fell apart. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. It feels good when the nerve is exposed to air. Oh. Yeah. So I had. So what they do? They just mashed it all up and made it good. Did I they, had a dream. Did they numb your mouth? Yeah, they numbed me up a little bit. Um, that I had a dream that I uh, was in the dentist chair, and. My mouth was open, and the dentist goes, oh, we got a problem. And I went, what? And he goes, well, all right. And he holds up a mirror. And he goes, you see that? And I go, yeah. And he goes, that's a tarantula. And I was like, why is it? And it was a tarantula lodged in the back of my throat. So I was like, well, what do we do? He goes, well, unfortunately, you got to put a piece of meat on your tongue. And I'm going to tell you why I had this dream. A meat on your tongue, and the tarantula will hopefully dislodge itself in the back of your throat and eat the meat, and you'll get rid of it. And then I looked down, and I was wearing black panties. <laughs> weird, man. And I go, why am I wearing black panties? He goes, that's your choice. And then I woke up. That's weird. That's so, very odd. So I, I know I, where all of this comes from, because there's a joke about that that I heard about wearing uh, black panties at the dentist. Please tell me it gets funnier. Or? And, it, well, and, then, and then somebody said, if you have a tapeworm, if you, have a ta- you know what a tapeworm is? Yeah, yeah. But it's in your stomach, right? Yes, and it can be really long, and it'll actually t- eat all the nutrients. It'll, it lodges itself in your intestine, and it can be, I think, a tapeworm. Look up how long a tapeworm can be. I can literally think it'd be 21 <laughs> well, we feet. We got an idea, yeah. It'd be yeah, like yeah. 20 feet yeah, or something. It can be very long. Yeah. And they, they literally suck all the nutrients from your body, so you can keep eating and eating and eating, and the tapeworm is living off the food you put in your intestines, and you can't get any nutrients. It's crazy. So the myth is that you're supposed to put a piece of ground beef in the back of your throat and the tapeworm will come up 
and eat it, and then you can grab it and pull it out. That's for sure, man. Ah! Yeah. For and sure, disgusting. You go for sure. Go see a doctor. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's before we get too distracted by Brian's dental situation and tapeworms, let's finish let's these current events. Let's wrap up this current yeah. event. Oh, what, I want to get involved. Yeah, jump on in. <laughs> oh, let me jump hey, on in. Hey, you got any more other shitty stories? Ah, damn God it. damn it. <laughs> shitty, no pun intended, because tapeworms, you shit them out in pieces, apparently. Well, not that I'd know. <laughs> not that I'd know. You got way too uh, much going on with tapeworms, man. All right, bro. <laughs> Last current event. So April Fool's just, just, uh, just passed by. <laughs> Brian laid his... Let us all know about his weird April Fool's experiences yeah. last week or in the last podcast. Yeah. Uh, apparently, The Rock, huge fan of April Fool's, but he's too smart for us. He doesn't do it on April 1st. He saves it, and he banks it so he can fuck his agent over at the worst possible time. Calls him in the middle, like right before Christmas Eve, <laughs> and tells him, hey, man, uh, just, don't, just don't freak out. Just... Don't freak out. I need your help right now. I just got a call. I just talked to my cousin who was on tour with us, and I guess he just got busted by the feds down in, down in like, Colombia with a ton of prostitutes. <laughs> and now, like, m- now my name's attached to it, and these, these girl, the girls are underage, and there's, like, he was, like, part of, like, the ring that was operating them, and now, and now my name's attached to it. I, I, I don't know what to do. Like, what the fuck do we do? This, the press already knows this is going to break in like less than 12 hours like we got we got us we got to get something together and his agent is like going fucking insane like losing his mind like getting up in the middle of the it's like, fucked like, up, like man. three o'clock in the morning <laughs> to go like fly out to go to go help the rock with his prostitute ring that he's now attached to that's terrible uh, that's awesome though that's awesome torture your agent oh my god that's yeah. good for and him then, and then he's like he's like hey brad hey brad his agent <laughs> December Fools! <laughs> December Fools. It's, like, so, it's not even a holiday. That's so bro. annoying. It's not even a holiday. Yeah, you don't have to do that. December Fools. That's fucked up, right? It's fucked up. Yeah. It's good, though. If you're going to do it, that's the way to do it. Don't wait till April Fools when everyone knows it. Like, you look at Instagram, especially UFC fighters. Everyone did like, oh, man, I hurt my knee. I'm out of my fight. It's like, dude, you got you to gotta do it another day. Rock smart, man. The rock super smart. I was going to do one, and I retract it very very fast because i thought about it uh, i watched a documentary called i think it's called getting clear or it's clear. going going clear going, did you see it yeah, i read the on book. scientology I read the book you, yeah. you, you know about it oh yeah it's insane I was in the class that they mentioned in that is i was in that class for 10 years what milton gonzalez's class acting class and he was level clear and it, i was in class with a bunch of scientologists like jenna oh you know were just, they cool or no yeah i never had a problem with them i when I you watch that when you watch that, yeah. you're like, what the... You would have to be yeah. an idiot. Straight well, up. You'd have to be a moron to believe it. So but we can finish on this, but my April Fool's joke was going to be, hey, everyone, I converted to Scientology. I was going to tweet that out. That's funny. But then, as you watch the documentary, their motto is, we don't defend, we attack. Anyone who attacks Scientology or makes fun of it, we attack. Yeah. And I just saw him ruining people yeah. that came out of the Scientology. I was like, yeah. you know what? That's not a good joke. Well, they follow you around with video I, I cameras. They'll, they'll, they'll do whatever they can. But I think they've scaled some of that back. And a lot of that was driven by, if you read the book, David Miscavige, who's the very elusive head of Scientology. He's been the head of the church since he was 25 years old. Oof. And the book does a really good job. It's not a very flattering picture of the, the head of it. But having said that, I had a lot of experience. I was on a show with Kirstie Alley, who's a Scientologist. A lot of the actors that came on the show as guest stars with Scientologists. We shot in the Scientology Center. What? Uh, we stayed where all the celebrities stay in the hotel. I, well, I didn't stay there, but I was up there with her. And um, and on top of that, I've been friends with a lot of Scientologists for like 20 years. Do you feel like class. shit because they didn't recruit you? I wonder what what pr- what they trait, never tried. I wonder what trait me. you give off where they don't want to recruit. I'm just you. I just would never join them, and they knew it. And I even did a I even did a charity. I did stand up in the Church of Scientology. This is what? a this is funny story. The place story. creeps me out, man. Oh well, so they they, they after 9/11. Tell they, us about this charity event. Well, uh, so after 9/11. They wanted to raise money for, you know, and if you know a little bit about Scientology, I, there's a lot of craziness about it, but there's also a lot of like, the, the, there are a lot of really high functioning adults who are in the Church of Scientology, and they're not crazy because a lot of the tenets of it are like, take responsibility for yourself. Um, uh, and and, and the, it, L. Ron Hubbard, say what you will, wrote dozens and dozens of books on how the human mind works. Like, he really went into that and studied a lot of psychology. And He's clinically stuff. insane, though. <laughs> 
Right, but but yeah. but there are like the re the reason it's it was so popular for a while is that there are tenets of it that are useful for your everyday life. There are positive tenets for that's, it. That's any right. any foundation, right. any religion. Right. So I go, they say, will you do this benefit? Oh, by the way, it's it's in the Church of Scientology, and they thought I'd say no. And I go, I don't give a shit. Of course I will. I'll do it. And I'd been I'd been been friends with a lot of Scientologists. It's for free. For free. It was to raise money. So I get up and I do stand up. And so, so I get up and I do stand up. And the first thing I say is, I, I said, you know, I told my friends I was doing a charity here at the Scientology Center, and all of them were like, "Be careful." And I was like, "Oh no, what are they going to do to me? Tie me to a chair and make me take responsibility for myself?" Did they laugh? And they were like, "Ah!" They all cheered and said, "All right, I was on, I was on a good, onto a good start." And and then I started doing my Israeli porn star guy, where I was like, "I take this chick, I make her to my bed, I make." I fuck her all the night with my cock, very big, not like American gang, like that. My cock make, I fuck her like that. I hit, hit, hit. And I was doing they all this it. crazy shit. They were laughing so hard, but I noticed that a lot of the Scientologists were literally holding hands like, holy shit. I get off stage, I get uh, swarmed by people. They're like, dude, this is a church. It's a church. You're, you're, you're. Like literally talking about dick and stuff like that. I was like, I thought it was a philosophy. And then the priest came over. They were really nice to me. They were really nice to me. But I, I, it just didn't dawn on me that this was a religion. I always thought of it as a philosophy. I never read Dianetics. If, or anything, if you watch that documentary, it's going to make you think that Scientology is anyone who believes or follows it is batshit crazy. Because that's the the bias of the director of the documentary. Yeah. I would love to see the. The other side of Scientology, because if you watch that, if you watch, the, yeah, what's it, getting clear? going, going, clear. going clear. So you know what that means? Yes. Yeah. It's the highest level you can reach yeah, where you're in Scientology. Clear. Real quick, the way Scientology works, it's kind of like when you sign up for jujitsu at certain gyms. Is you're gonna have different belt levels. Yeah. And you have to pay for every single level exactly until you get thing. to clear. It's the exact same thing. Yeah. Now, what's interesting in this is they have guys who were high up. Very high up in Scientology. One guy was like the the basically the vice president of it. The other guy was head of security. After 25, 30 years, they talked to these guys. They're out of it. Cause they like, blew. This it's shit. called blown. He blew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They the, take off. These guys just are out of it, and they're like, this shit is crazy. And they're 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 classified as a religion, so they don't pay taxes. Yes. By they, the way, they won. They sued the IRS. Yes, and they won. kept suing him. And, and it's some crazy shit, man. Yeah. And that Hubbard guy, you watch the Hubbard. Like I said, I'd like to see someone's. I, I would love to sit down with someone. Why the hell would you join them? Well, take a, let's take the flip side. So l let's take let's take Christianity. If you didn't know anything about Christianity, if you hadn't grown up Ooh, around We're going down a weird but think about road. It. Think about it. Weird road. Right. But think about it. So you have a church. You go in. There's this. There's a there's a, a rabbi, a very thin uh, Jewish guy up on a cross, his likeness. Um, oh, and by the way, uh, you're going to you're going to symbolically, if you're Catholic, take eat his flesh and drink his blood in the form of a wafer and drink wine. You, you take in his his blood, you drink his blood symbolically and eat his flesh. So you are cannibalizing your God. I'm just saying what they do in the Catholic no, I'm Church. With you. Yeah, yeah. So you, there are a lot of things about Catholicism. Let's take the, the, All the stories about Christ. He walked on water. He raised the dead. He's a zombie. He raised Lazarus from the dead. R he we, then we all died. know this, right? Right. Jesus, the story of Jesus, real quick, hold, hold, you're a zombie. <laughs> you're a zombie. You're a zombie. Now, now, hold on. Not only Which that, is whatever. I mean, not listen, not I'm not, not against that. it. What hinges on you're Christianity, the biggest thing, the most important thing about being a Christian, it, you have to be a Christian if you have to believe this. It's not enough to say Christ was a prophet. Islam always called Christ a great prophet. Where Islam differs, where Muslim people differ, is that they don't believe Jesus was God, just like the Jews don't believe Jesus was God. He wasn't the Messiah. With, when you're a Christian, you've got to believe that Jesus died and then was risen. Now, how do you know that? Well, there are three people that have testimony. Mary, his mother, I believe, and mm -hmm. one other woman who saw Jesus three days after he died and he was risen. And based on their word, well, Jesus is God. So if you actually look at the tenets that hold Christianity together, that could be accused of, and there are a lot of good things about Christianity, of course, love your enemy, turn the other cheek, confession, all those things. 
uh, forgiveness is huge. Um, and, and I believe that I'm not a Christian. I'm not a very religious person. I think we owe a great deal of debt to organized religions. I know that's contrary 100%. to a lot of belief. Yeah, but a lot of people disagree with that. Having said all that, like you said, you can t- look at any organized um, structure of belief, and there are many things that are fantastical about it, that are crazy about it, and all that stuff, you know, to the rational mind. But I also think that there's something you get from religion, any religion, and that's inspiration. That's the notion that you get a feeling that when shit is really bad, at least I have my God. There's a higher being. I always say if you lose a child, God forbid, um, the scientist isn't going to help you. The atheist isn't. You're going to a man of cloth who can tell you that there's a reason for everything because you need it. Um, A lot of people really have gotten a lot of solace from that. So, you know, with Scientology, the other side of it, just from my very limited uh, 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 exposure, but I did spend 10 years in a class with a lot of them and talked to a lot of them at length was that um, there are, you would take classes, and those classes were essentially classes on helping you on how to manage your emotions. It's almost seen a therapist, right? Exactly. It's like how to manage your emotions. You would do this auditing thing. There was no science on it, but you'd hold these paddles. And, Electric. And, yeah, and, and, and they would ask you charged questions. And if, you had, if, you, if your heartbeat raised and if your breathing changed, well, there's something going on there emotionally. That that all makes sense, and that I get. That mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I, I could get down with that. Yeah. But then, like Homeboy said, again, and this is from a do- the documentary, but as you get higher up, you get to a certain point where only – and very few have reached it – where you get to read these writings straight from Hubbard. Yeah. And it's in a it's in a brief Secret case. writings. Secret writings where they say, if you're not ready for this, you open it up, it could hurt someone. Yeah. You want to read them. So this dude says, like I said, this guy's been the, the church of Scientology for 30 years. Wasn't it years. Haggis, the director, Paul Haggis? No. Was Oscar winning? Okay. No, it's a different guy. Uh-huh. So he uh, said he opened up the briefcase. He was all excited. He opens up, and he reads these writings. And he said he sat there and was like, I think I'm being tested because I've waited 25 years to read this. And I think it's a test because if I believe this, they're going to say, you're an idiot and you're batshit crazy. Get out of it's our church. It's all about church. spaceships and crazy shit, right? It was about Hubbard believed, and he's very paranoid, that Hubbard believed, the creator of Scientology, believed that on another planet, because of overpopulation, they had to freeze human beings or the beings of that planet and put them on these spaceships that came from this other planet to Earth and drop these frozen bodies, humans, whatever you want to call them, off, but they dropped them in volcanoes. And then as these planes were leaving, they ignited nuclear bombs, atom bombs, to blow this thing up, and now we have Earth. And then those bodies that blew up are these... Phaetons? Phaetons or... Phaetons. It's a th- yeah, spirit. A spirit. spirit. Yeah. So when a baby's born, these Phaetons, hundreds of thousands of them, will go into the body... So you have to work on getting these things out. Yeah, it's crazy. It's insane. Yeah. So this guy, and this is the best part, this old guy goes, I looked around and I said, are you fucking serious? <laughs> it's so funny because this guy's dead serious the whole <sighs> documentary. And he goes, I opened up and I was like, is this, f-? and he doesn't cuss at all the whole movie. Right. And then he goes, is this for fucking real? Yeah. There's, uh, there's no way I, I've waited 25 years for this bullshit. I think and so was, he said, see ya. Yeah. I think that was probably the reaction to a lot of people, but but I mean, I, I think that Scientology got more in trouble, not so much for its structure of belief and, and, and how it brought, because a lot of people got things out of it. Uh, and I know smart people have got, who've been in the church for 20 years, they're actually now out. But, but having said that, I think what really got the Church of Scientology in trouble is their, the, their practices on going after people when they left or when they criticized the church. And I believe from the, book, from the book that that was led by a guy, guys like David Miscavige, who's not, if you read the book, I don't know him, I never met him, doesn't sound like a very good guy. He really doesn't. And they, they say, so. like with celebrities, like, you know, and again, this is the documentary, man. So uh, with Tom Cruise, he was the poster boy of Scientology. So they yes. use him to communicate with millions of people around the world. Well, when Tom Cruise was dating, was married to Nicole Kidman, the church found out Nicole Kidman's dad in Australia is a psychologist in a college. He's a professor, so he's a yeah. smart dude. Well, they thought psychologists are, are they're very against psychology. Be, and why do you think that is? Psychologists are very educated. They 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 can basically break down Scientology. This is why it doesn't work. There's no science behind mm-hmm. it. So so psychologists were the enemy. 
well, her dad was a psychologist. She's close with her dad, so therefore she's the enemy. Yeah. And so they they basically force this divorce with Tom Cruise. And then, if that's not weird enough, if that's not fucking weird enough, they basically groomed and created the perfect ideal girl for Tom. Yeah. Made her dye her hair, made her act a certain way. So then... Uh, they're dating. Tom and this girl are dating. This young girl are dating, and she comes uh, to this dinner where I think the what's the homeboy? David Miscavige. Yeah, Miscavige is there. David Miscavige is there. Tom Cruise and him are best friends. So Tom looks at him like you know the savior to the world. So she's there and she has a migraine headache and she's not focused on what. Uh, she made him repeat himself. Yeah, it, it, which embarrassed him. Embarrassed him. I guess Tom slams down, freaks out. They break up. She's heartbroken, tells a friend what happens. The uh, Scientology find this out because they track all their stuff, whatever. And You can't third party. It's called third partying. So basically what they do, they go in, they erase every memory on her phone, laptop, pictures, and just you You were never part of this. Oh, oh, and then and she left. Nope. Then you got to be disciplined. Yeah. Then you got to be disciplined. So they made her on her hands and knees scrub toilets with two br- toothbrushes. Nice. Nice, like the military. You guys got to watch the documentary. It's, it's, when you watch it, it's mind I was thinking about it's Tom. Wor- it's well, worth a watch. Think about Tom Cruise. I was thinking about that. The, the biggest movie star in the world, all that money, handsome and shit, and can't make a relationship work. What's going on there? Can't make a relationship work. Oh, yeah. Um, God, what do they call that? Bat shit crazy? Yeah, I don't know. That's what I call it in Aurora, I, Colorado. Yeah. Call you bat shit crazy. I don't know, man. It's you a, remember, you remember when, he ju- when, when he was doing the Oprah Winfrey interview and he jumped up on the couch they said that destroyed his career well a lot of it also was that you know then he 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 kind of never had a sense of humor he was humorless about scientology and just doing that crazy stuff like what are you doing jumping up on the couch and that's not how human beings behave you can't hide you look like a wild you can't hide crazy yeah you look like a bad shit crazy there's nothing can do for it there's literally there's no cure there's, there's, if that's your personality, I, I promise you, especially if you do that much interviews, it's going to come out. So, so, so it'd be like this. You and I, you know, when, when you're friends or you start dating somebody or you make friends with somebody, I, had, I, I started to get to know this guy, and he goes like this. I get a text. Um, would you mind if we took our friendship to a to, – to a, uh, would you mind if we, we took our friendship to a higher level? You seem like a great guy. Is this a creep line story? No. He was just trying to be friends. I was like, you don't know how to be friends, dude. No wonder you're alone. What are you talk? Don't talk to me like that. That's creepy, bro. <laughs> Friends, don't Just let it that. happen, man. Guess who's not my friend anymore? Yeah, you, you, buddy. Whoa, bro. How 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 about the the guy who you've known for maybe two weeks, right? And you're like hanging out in a group, and you get ready to leave, and he pulls this one. Love you, man. Oh my god, <laughs> dude. We have friends like that. Uh, love you, bro. And I go, no, you don't. <laughs> my father, no, I don't love you. My father comes home in New York. My seventy at the time, he's seventy. And he comes home and he goes like this, and he's an old school Marine. You know those guys <laughs> they are don't like tell each other. Are you, that you what love it. old school Marine? Like you know, grew up in the Midwest and and just you know, and and just hard. And he uh, <laughs> he comes he comes in and he goes, Jesus Christ! I go what? He goes, I realize with this this accountant guy. I don't know him that well. Hanging out, he gets about to get on the cab. I say, see you later. He goes, love you. And my father goes, I was checking my fly to see if my dick was hanging out of my pants <laughs> at 70. I was laughing. So I goes, Last time I hang out with that guy, Sir, he's not my account anymore. No, you don't. Uh, no, you don't. No, you don't. I just don't drop the love bomb. I, I don't drop the hell bomb for just anything. I do not drop that. You kidding me? What? Stop it yeah. right now. Uh, li- literally, I, ba- I barely, this guy was a friend of a friend, and we're all getting ready to leave. He goes, Gives me a hug. Goes, love you, bro. No, you don't. No, no, no. Hey, let's back that up right now. I went. Ah, I got all uh, weird. I, went, I don't love you. Get off me, man. Get off me right now. How about, how about no? Hashtag you don't have any friends. <laughs> Hashtag you just jumped in real quick. Hey, hey, Jim Carrey from Cable Guy. Get off of me. How about those guys who know who, who like they're like they come into your group and you don't know anything about their past. Like they have no friends from their past. Like zero friends. You're like. Where are your friends? How come we're all your new buddies? Dude, we, we, Where are your old we had this the other day, though, remember? Well, the other week, I say, we were playing beach volleyball, and we're at lunch, and I'm like, okay, I know you, Sasso. I know you, Delia. Oh, I that's you. right. I know you. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Who's, so then all who's of Mickey some, McStranger over <laughs> here? Yeah, so all of a sudden, Brian's all, hey, do you know this guy? And I'm all, no. And I go, Dove, I go, hey, Dove, you know that guy? Dove goes, no. I'm like, didn't that, eat a thing either. That's three out of three. Yeah. And then I was like, all right, he must be with Sasso. Guy gets up, go to the bathroom. I'm like, 
Sass, so that's your boy, huh? When you guys go to college together? Sass goes, I don't know that guy. <laughs> just was chilling with us. Uh, just chilling. I guess with Brendan Schaub and Brian Gallon. You just jumped hey, in. Hey, I like your work, man. Oh, good. You're just a fan now? Literally chilled with us all day. Great. Good. But he didn't play volleyball. He just like. Didn't need a thing. Didn't play volleyball. Just kind of walked around. And I was like, what do you do? He goes, I train, man. I'm a, I'm a personal trainer. No, oh, you. All right. You look. I mean, you're. I guess you. You're thin. I'll give you that. You're thin. You're, thin. you're wiry. You're a wiry trainer. With, yeah. With you can never work out a day in your life. You're gonna look exactly. With like a couple that. snaggle teeth, I could throw an apple at your face. It'd stick. And uh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. He just looked strange. But he's chilling with us. He was chilling, man. But everyone assumed he was boys with the other person. Oh. So this guy got a free pass. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I've had that. I was in San Diego, and this girl comes up, and it's me and two other guys, and my buddy Leo, who opens for me, Leo Flowers, really funny guy, and and she starts talking to us. She's kind of drunk. She's like, "Hey guys, I just like to meet new people," and Leo just turns to her and he goes, "We're having a private conversation right now. Can you give us a minute?" <laughs> <laughs> and we all went, "Oh!" And she went, "Great, no problem." <laughs> Dude, that's she deserved it. When you get when you get a Lisa Linger, you have got to be dead. Yeah, honest with him, man. Gotta do it. You man. have to. It's, it's just we awful. get it all the time. Yeah, we we get it all yeah, the time. Why don't I sit at your table? Uh, I do. We'll, we'll be at our favorite restaurant, and a girl will literally just be like, hey, what's up? Like, well, uh, I'm having a we'll conversation. Be in a, a, me and Brian will be in a dead serious conversation with friends, family. Like, like lean in, lean in. Like, lean like, in. Like, you know, like a, like a powwow. Should, should, like, basically like a huddle. What's should, going on, everybody? Should, should I mean, what are we talking about? Uh, uh, oh. How about you go get me another fucking ice? How about leave immediately? Yeah. yeah. See ya. It's just, it's always that way. Well, you know, being, breaking up with people, telling people they're not welcome, those are not easy things to do sometimes. Yeah, but people just don't, they don't realize their boundaries, man. Yeah. They that's don't the realize their boundaries thing. at all. That's the weirdest thing to me. You know, I remember one time uh, when I was 14 and this guy, they, these two dudes were older and they were talking and it was, um, and it was, I think it was uh, f- football. I played one year of JV football. What a hilarious I thing. Bet you were I was the worst. I, was, I, 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 I played safety. Uh, slow. I hated the cold in New England. I didn't want to get hit. I bet uh, I'm not made for your football. Your pants were saggy in the back. Uh, they used the to laugh pads at me. didn't fit. They laughed at me. They used to laugh at me. They like, look at it. Look at it. How we, I'd run away from that. I just didn't like all that. It was too much. I'm not built for it. Anyway, these two big guys are talking. And I, I remember I was 14, and I jump in the conversation. And they, the one dude was older. He goes, hey, bro. Why don't you stare right ahead? You stare just straight ahead, okay? And I was like, and I immediately went, I'll never interrupt a conversation like that again. Lesson learned. I knew. At 14, I went, I get it. I get it. You guys are juniors. I'm an idiot. No problem. I just stared you've straight been ahead. Interrupting, Feelings were hurt. You've been interrupting people since 1973. Yep. Feelings were hurt. And I was like, mm, you're all right. right. Your place. Oh, well, don't man. jump in when you don't know two dudes. Don't just, hey. My mother does it all the time. It's hilarious. She's so cute. She'll just sit there and smile. Wait for an opening. I'm like, don't do it. <laughs> well, you and I are very opinionated, so, and we don't yeah. hold back. No. I've got, I've got in trouble many of times. Like the time I was at this dinner, and I didn't know who this guy was. And you know, people are talking sports, so I can talk sports with the best of them. We're yeah. going, we're going, and he goes. Someone brings up the fact. Obviously, this is a debate everyone's had that LeBron James is better than Michael Jordan. And I'm a LeBron James fan. I usually rep LeBron James all yeah. the time for whatever reason. You know, I have I, to jump in. You know, I like to argue. Yeah. So everyone was on LeBron James nuts, and nah. I go, nah, Michael Jordan. I start ripping off all his rings, the points he average, all this you stuff. Are, you were right, by the way. I would have been right with you. 100%. So me and this guy are going back and forth across the table, and we're kind of sh- – it's getting heated, and we're just going over. I'm like, what are you talking about? The guy fucking had to leave Cleveland to get a ring, and now he's, you know what I'm saying? We're going, and this guy's getting really heated. And I'm like, why is this guy so fucking heated about LeBron James? And, I, and then somewhere along the line, we crossed over into where we were kind of offensive to each other. I go, what the fuck do you know? He goes, well, I'm LeBron James' uh, lawyer, so I've worked with him since he was, uh, you know, 19. I'm like, well, but All I, right, I, fair enough. But, 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 but I would have been like, argument over. You have an emotional connection. What the fuck am I talking to you about? Yeah, but of course was, you're going to yeah. defend your paycheck. What's the tough. Fuck? You know that that's, I don't know. Those those arguments get heated. Those kind of sports arguments, oof. super heated. Oh, it's it's crazy. And no one's gonna win because you no. have you, you know. No. Mike Jordan is the greatest of all time. Right? Yeah, well, there's there's no question about that. You know, he would dominate. He said, "I just want people to, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, my goal is to have people say, oh, Michael Jordan, he'd dominate today.' Probably true. Yeah. Uh, 
Maybe. I was thinking about something. You had, you reminded me of something on this theme, and I and I can't remember what it was. What now. theme? The interruption theme and just uh, being opinionated and. Uh, Ooh, it'll get you in trouble. Yeah. Ooh, it will get you in trouble if yeah. you're in the wrong setting. Yeah. Right. Most of the time, it works well for me, but. You got to know what you're talking about too. Well, you got to know. Yeah, you but you got to know your audience too. My father can be. My father is one of the most imp- infuriating people to argue with because he knows his facts. But if you're making, if you're, if you start making a point, this is how he'll kill you. So start, start making a political point. I don't care what it is. Watch this. Just go ahead. Well, no, I mean we, we, we should tax yeah. marijuana. See, this is the kind of, the this is the kind of argument. I, I wouldn't romance your argument in the real world, but since we're <laughs> in a family setting, let me try to indulge your so thought process, which, by the way, is all over the place. Uh, I, it's hard to make sense of it, but if you give me a minute here, I'll try to, I'll try to piece together Just what you're saying. I'm like, bro, I'll, you're my father. I'll punch you in the face right now. I'll ruin this relationship right now. Right now. I used to be like, what the fuck? And he's just incredible at that. And then he just, or he'd do this, start talking. So to give me another argument. Watch this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just, just make a point. So uh, LeBron, watch this. LeBron James is uh, the greatest player of all time. I disagree. I think Michael Jordan. Okay, see what you're doing right now? You see how you just got, you started your, spe- your speech pattern. Breathe. Your speech pattern sped up. You just sped oh, up. Oh, no. You sped up. No, you no. you got to breathe. I'm I Dude, I I'm go. like, you're my Warm father. Man. I will face. come right at you right now. Oh. oh, it's the best. It's the best. <laughs> That's how it is. You get insulting. We all get insulting like that. Guys do. Guys will just be like, my buddy Gavin, he is the most confrontational person on the planet. You know those friends of yours who will just argue? Like the waitress comes over one time and she goes, uh, he goes, do you have Guinness? And she goes, "Um, yeah. Uh, And he goes, draft? She goes, no, bottle. But it's the same thing. And he goes, what? The same thing? You're telling me the bottle is the same thing as draft. He starts off. I was I like, bro, she's 22. Like she yeah, care less. She doesn't work for Stop Guinness. this right now. Yeah. yeah. I'll shit on people like that. Yeah. You don't want to yeah, do yeah, that, yeah. man. No. That's no. not cool. No. It's not cool at all. Well, well, there we are. It's folks. hard to be our friend. It's hard to be our friend. Evan the Beard looks bored. Yeah, Evan, what's Brian. going on? Yeah. Did you know that uh, the Brendan doesn't know how to operate a vending machine? Yeah. Why? What happened? This one at Fox is tricky. It's really not. It's a vending machine. It's just a vending machine. Oh, but you do have to push the numbers. Yeah. You ever that where it's like G12? And you're like, I put G2. What the, I don't want. I don't want shitty peanuts, man. I want Bro, the. You know. Yeah. I want a Snickers bar because my diet yeah. starts Monday. I, yeah. Oh, I hired a nutritionist. Oh, you did. We'll talk about it. Ooh. But I. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna have a Snickers. I haven't ate anything this morning. So I entered the number. It gave me a fucking Nature Valley granola bar. Wow. I, that's that's really annoying because that's the last thing I'd want. A nature value. The last granola. thing I would. If, it's, if they it, said out of that machine, what's the last thing you'd want? Uh, it'd be that. A granola bar. Does it come with a gallon of water I can wet my palate <laughs> in since it sucks all the moisture out of my body? Hey, eat, eat one of these granola bars and look like a prune when you're done. A prune with a wig on. Because oh. if somehow my mouth gets more dry, I'm literally like, it's like the Sahara Desert. You know what? I'll eat sand. I'd rather eat sand because it's more moisturizing to my mouth than this fucking <laughs> granola bar. It's what true. the fuck is granola anyway? It's, true, it's a shitty invention. We're going to roast the shit out of oats and a bunch of other stuff like seeds and mash them together with malt. Have fun. Is there any way we can make them a little yeah. moist? Yeah. Make them meat. Make Ugh. it a warrior bar from on it. That's better. That's a good point. I'm fresh out of them. Yeah. Although, not to plug on it, but I have to. The hemp protein bars, those are moist. Those are very moist and those tasty. Those are fresh. Ooh, I lived on those. Had a lot of energy when I was hiking. Uh, hiking, hunting. I mean hiking, hunting in can- in Alaska. Oh, newsflash. We're not doing the fight companion this weekend. Why not? Uh, this Saturday for Chad Mendez, we call it our Lava Llamas because <laughs> uh, it's at 10 a.m. Ooh. Rogan doesn't get back from Mexico to like noon or something like that. Wow, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. You and I can do it. <laughs> just floating it out there everybody you never know fighting the kid we should do a fighter hands. yeah we really should what we should do is and fans reach out to us if you think it's a good idea even when rogan does the big pay-per-views you me someone else could do our own fight companions yeah we'll, we'll think about it brilliant brilliance 
Probably not 10 a.m. on a Saturday. Um, not on a Saturday. Yeah. But yeah. on the usual ones, on the nah. pay-per-views, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 10 a.m. Um, on Saturday. You know why they're doing it? Because they don't want to compete with NCAA men's basketball. Oh. <clears throat> the hmm. Final Four that weekend. Ooh. Do you watch that? I've heard that that is the most exciting sporting event, period. Yeah, no. Um it's definitely not, but I do watch it. I watch it. What is for your sure not for you? Exciting. What's the most exciting sporting event? Like, what is the one thing you go? Ooh, it doesn't depend on the teams. And is it the Super Bowl? If it's a great matchup, Super Bowl is good. I think playoff football is better than the Super Bowl. Yeah, me too. Super Bowl seems kind of fake and gimmicky to me. Not this year. Boy, seems a little good. fake. I don't know why. It seems really gimmicky. This year was incredible. Nothing's better than a big heavyweight title fight. Yeah. In boxing or in UFC, UFC like. Uh, like John Jones, a John Jones like big, light heavyweight title fight is pretty. It's pretty dope. What about? That's probably you, the best event. Are you? What about that one event? Not the whole card. That one fight. You, as a fighter, are you really excited about Aldo um, M- McGregor? Yes, huge. Yeah, me too. Huge. I was very amazed when he stole his belt like that. I saw him standing next to I love Aldo. It. He's way taller. He's way bigger. He, he, M- McGregor will fight at fifty five. I bet in the next yeah, year. Yeah, it's gotta be a bitch of a cut for him he looks much bigger than Aldo but that's why he's you know he's dominated yeah yeah I love it when he grabbed the belt it's good man we're all talking about it he's smart man the kid's a marketing beast he's a marketing beast beast because they tank they tank they work hard they tank they tank they work hard all those not gonna be an easy fight man you're you're batshit crazy you don't think that fight's gonna be more exciting than Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather you're fucking crazy. I agree with you, man. The only reason Mayweather and Pacquiao is so big is because we've been waiting for this fight for six years. Yeah. If it was 2009, yeah, greatest boxing fight in history. Yeah, sign me up. Right. Fast forward, Floyd's damn near 40. Do you think they've lost – is it because they've lost a step? All the above. Hmm. But I feel like both of them have to know this is the biggest test of their career. And even though yeah, they both know. Even though they're like mid thirties at this point, White Floyd's what thirty six or thirty seven? Floyd's thirty eight. I think he might be thirty six. I feel like. I think he's thirty eight. Um, and might be thirty seven. Thirty seven. Pacquiao, 38. and is that? Pacquiao's thirty six. Yeah, Mayweather's thirty eight. Wow. What's Pacquiao? Ooh, closing in. Yeah. Wouldn't you say the thirty eight? Thirty eight. You do. Manny's thirty six. Oh, I mean. What I said. So 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 so. Strange, but but but, really. but isn't as a boxer can't you still be at your 100 percent peak at 37 38? I don't think so. No. What are you gonna say? You gonna give me the Bernard Hopkins thing? Well, well, there's said, B- there's Bernard though, man. Yeah, there's Hopkins, and then there's everyone else, yeah. Brian. Well, but, there's but, everyone else. But I don't see any signs. It's of like what what about NFL running backs, man? I mean, geez, bro. I mean, look look at a guy or quarterbacks. Look at like Vinny Testaverde. He's 44 playing quarterback, man. Look at yes. Hard get cases that. make bad laws. That's what you're saying. Yeah, it's not good, man. But if it was honestly, if it was six years ago, it's the biggest fight in boxing history. It's just not, man. It's not. They're also small guys. You know, remember they're small guys. This isn't like Muhammad Ali fight. Right. This isn't you know a Sonny Liston fight. Right. These, these aren't those classic wars. And with their style, it's not going to be a brawl. No one's. I. There's going to be no blood. Hate to tell you. No one's get. No one's gonna brawl. We're gonna see someone get knocked down. to me back and forth. Not not at all. Manny's gonna chase him around the ring. Floyd's gonna get his shots in. Win rounds here. It's gonna go to decision. Hate to spoil it. The only thing is that there may be no one who can close that distance and get in on angles and throw those five, six, seven punch combinations like Manny, and maybe Floyd hasn't seen anything like that. I don't know. You'd I hope. Know. You'd hope. I. I again, mean, I again. hope it's a great fight. Didn't didn't but Floyd beat the ba- shit out of Marquez? And Marquez. I mean, that's stupid to do, though, man. Why? It's stupid Style? to make a comparison. Yeah. Styles. But yeah, but it, it's stupid to make those comparisons. Well, Marquez beat him. Well, Manny's beat Marquez too before. Yeah. And what are you going to say? Because Manny ate a right hand, got knocked out. Well, the fights were so close before that. Is all I'm saying. They were so pretty evenly matched, Marquez and Manny. Yeah. By the way, so I don't know. Sometimes. I don't know. You Time. see how much they're selling the pay per view for? How is it? Yeah, they announced it officially today. It's a hundred. Well, ninety nine. But I buy it, and I will. Most expensive pay per view ever. Makes sense, and they're, they're gonna, quite a bit. They're going to make their money. Well, what's normally it's se- uh, what sixty nine ninety nine for HD Floyd Mayweather fight. So, yeah. Hundred dollars, hundred bucks. Yeah. Floyd, Floyd is just. I just incredible. think it's going to be a disappointment, man. 
I know I sound like a hater. No, I totally agree. I, I promise I promise you, and if you're listening to our show and you're not a UFC fan, do me a favor. Yeah. Do me this solid. Do me a big, brown, solid favor here. Buy the Manny Pacquiao pay-per-view. Buy it with your bias, views, whatever. And then buy the Aldo McGregor. And tell me which one is more entertaining. What day is the Aldo McGregor, please? May? July 11th. It's July 11th. Yeah. We are going to have a big party for that. Oh, I'm already excited. Who's Wait, who's having a party? I'm not driving to fucking Calabasas. Oh, yeah, you are. Who's having a party? You never have a party. No, you guys, party. you guys are coming to Vegas. Oh. Is that the ex- that's the Expo weekend, that's right? the Expo weekend. Oh, dude. Yeah, we got to work there. You're 100% going to be in Vegas. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I can't. So says Vegas. So says Evan. So says Ben. Evan. All right. Done. So says Evan. Done. For reals, though, do it. Pacquiao, Floyd, Aldo, McGregor. Excited. Show me. Good. Show me which one's more entertaining. Where is that fight taking taking place? Which one? In the Aldo McGregor fight. MGM. Mm-hmm. We're gonna be there, huh? Well. I mean, we did do a live fighter in the kids' show at the Expo the, the other year, and I thought that was pretty cool. It was fun. The show and I are going to be ringside. Right would kind of be interested to see what a, what a fighter in the kids' show would look like this year. Me too. Because I think some people would come out for it. Way bigger. Some it was people would come out for time. it. I think some people are going to come out. I think you'd be surprised. I think a I couple think, people might show up. I think you might be surprised. I think you'd be I'm surprised. Excited. I have people hit me up on when we release shirts, like, "Bro, I'm in California." I'm literally right up the street from you. Hashtag creepy. Right up the street from you. Uh, is there anywhere I can just stop by and pick them up before they sell out? I don't have them on me, man. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not hustling shirts out of my Porsche. I love out that. Out the front <laughs> trunk. Some guy tweeted me. He said, I will literally buy the shirt off your back for twice the price. I was like, I'll send it to you. And yeah. then he never got back to me because I forgot to follow him. Um. <laughs> <laughs> he never got back to me because he, he, he literally couldn't. He tried to get a hold of me. He couldn't. just didn't happen. Yeah, I would. I'll send it to you. It's a, it's a problem is it's such a pain in the ass to send something. Go to the post office, package it. No, I'm, I'm to- I completely you agree with Brian. You up already? Are you doing this already? No, because you still got it. Brian and I were on a 40-minute conference call with Stamps.com yep. this morning. Uh, it's going to be a new sponsor It's a great show. company, man. And, and can I just say, can I just say this? This is great. So they're going back. It's me, Brian, probably six other people, our agent, uh, Stamps.com employees. They're media people, marketing people. We're going back and forth. And I'm like, yeah, no, we, we can have fun with this one. And, and Brian's like, yeah, it's, it's convenient. You know, it's just really good. Because you really quickly before you tell them, the, the, the company is you basically can print your own postage right at your house with, you know, with, with a printer. And you, they'll send you a scale. It's, it's great. It's easy, it's, convenient. So you you know, it it eliminates the, you don't the have post office. You drive to the post office. Is the yes. point it's yeah. basically like Netflix compared to Blockbuster. Right. You don't have to go to Blockbuster anymore. Just go, you stay at home, you're on Netflix, you order on Netflix. That's what stamps.com is for the mailing service. Right. Real easy. We'll, this we'll even explain a pitch. it to you when it's yeah, on time. We don't need to. Right. This isn't a pitch. So the remarking people are going back and forth. And then the old, the old bit killer Brian here, I thought we lost the sponsor, goes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, literally, people are talking and just out of nowhere, Brian goes, yeah, yeah. And listen, I, you know, I love what you guys are doing. And I just think, too, it's environmentally friendly. I mean, if you if you think about the gas you're going to save driving and, you know, you could carpool, so it's going to help the environment. And literally, I there's just a go, pause, there's a pause. There's a pause. There's and a pause. I go, and I go, Brian, goes, Brian, you're reaching. And then finally, the one marking guy who doesn't say a word Brian, all you're reaching. goes, yeah, I got to be honest. You're really reaching. We, like, how about we stick to what we talked about? And I was there like, oh my god, old we, tangent. We just, we just lost Tony. Tony Tangent. I, have you ever heard of? Have you ever heard of saying nothing is sometimes far nope. better? Tony Tangent had an idea pop in his head. I was, was doing some shit too. Terrible idea. I was like, I was like cleaning the fridge. Oh, I was out. getting ready. I was on yeah. speed run. I was getting ready. And yeah, it was great. It was, yeah, we don't, I mean, it was good. No, it yeah. was good. It was good. It was a good call. It was good. Either way, though. It was a great yeah, call. But uh, you can save gas and like environmentally an friendly. Like that was the last – because we've been on the phone for about a half That's hour. That's what caught my like, attention. I was all – I was like – Huh? <laughs> it literally – everyone was talking, having a good time, and then Brian gets, goes, yeah, and it's save gas. You know, save the environment. Literally, this is how it went. Pause. 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 I was like, I better save this thing. Hey, Brian, that's a reach. Everyone starts laughing. It's the equivalent. And we all made fun of Brian for a solid five minutes. Yeah, it's my favorite thing. It's the sharp F. Everybody's talking, and then something comes in. Like, everybody's playing music. You're the trumpet. Like, 
like, what the fuck is we, we don't need that sharp F in here, bro. We're in a smooth symphony. Yeah, Just things are going. Here comes Brian. Bam, bam. Environment. What about the environment? You get carpool to the carpool. I thought they'd be like, Brian, great idea. I was trying to get their approval. As soon as you said, I was like, oh, we How lost sad. them. Brian trying to get somebody's approval. Hey, guys, what about this idea? They were like, nah, stick to this. I have problems sticking to You really do. Mission. You get so off. I'd be a terrible Navy SEAL. I'd be like, dude, they're, they're cooking goat over here. Let's just take a detour. Oh, I'd be the worst. I'm not yeah. very linear. Your hair's looking uh, nice and thick. And it I'm is, right? You're not mad to like the part. I got to do some uh, some stuff for the UFC. I got to break down the five best fights of all time What, today. Do, what do you put in your... Oh, yeah. you do? Mm -hmm. um, I was going to ask you what you put in your hair, but I'm more interested in the five best fights, but I need an answer to both. Oh, well, we got time, man. God, I knew what's what do you what do you what do you gel your hair up with? God, it's called uh, suave, suave, uh, suavecito, suavecito. Really? And this stuff, it's it's there's no alcohol in it, so it's good for your hair. It's like a pomade, right? It's based out of California somewhere. So this is me giving you guys a shout out. But I was obsessed with it. I ran out of it in Jacksonville when I was at that charity event, and I freaked out. So when I got home, I ordered about t ten tubs of it. Suavecito. I don't ever want to run out Suavecito. of it. Yeah, your hair's not really made for it. No, so. it's not. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't don't look at it either. I'm self conscious. But wait, no, seriously, you're here's you're losing your hair. Um taking Propecia and I've gotten more hair since I've been taking it. Really? So, yes. Propecia really works? It really does. Did, now does it grow everywhere? No. Like is hair everywhere? No. Just your head. It just blocks the DHT, the dehydrotestosterone, whatever it's called. Yeah, it's not and, working. And, and, and uh <laughs> but uh do you so do you squirt on your head or do you take, no, a, you pill? take a pill? And One tiny pill, a dollar a pill. It's ridiculous. It sounds like a hell of a deal, really. So thirty dollars a month to keep your fucking not hair? that actually, huh? No, Jeez. that's true. Why don't I why try being I... addicted to meth, my man? Dude, you're um, right. That's so true. Why didn't I think of that? It's thirty bucks a, a month. Thirty bucks a month. It's to not bad. Set of hair, but this is my thing. I'm, I, if you take the pill, there's no way it's just going straight to your head. It's growing hair. It, like your arms are hairy as fuck. I can't see my dick right now. Let's be honest. <laughs> it's a, just a bush. Just a bush. Just, you, I take my pants off. You just hear. And you got a bunny tail out the back. <laughs> and a, a bunny, bunny tail. tail. Just a big tuft of hair on my. Just an afro hanging off your top of your ass. I lose it. <laughs> oh, God. No, seriously, though. How's, it's not going straight to your head. Yeah, it blocks the hair from falling out, and then you grow hair. So that's why my Over your entire so. body, though, right? No, no, no. no. Just your hair. That's why it's a different follicle. It's affected by different chemicals. But that's why my hair is so lush does it right stretch, now. No, does it stretch you out though? This, that's why it's so lush. At what point are you gonna get, wear a wig or just shave it? Hey, bro, I don't These like your are serious questions, questions, man. I'm not wearing a fucking wig. Why not? Because I don't. It's the same reason I don't put a fin on the back of my fucking Passat. It's not gonna make it look faster, asshole. <laughs> now, now, let's break down the five greatest fights of all time. Hold on. Well, no, I, 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 Hold. I'm getting paid to do that, so I'm not going to do it right now. Well, can I? I want. Um, now you got me intrigued. All right, go. My my greatest fights all time. No, guess what the five are. You got to say Jones Gustafson. That's number one. Okay, thank you. Well, no, it's not number one, but that's in the list. I know Diego Sanchez is in there. Nope. He's not. Nope. Keep Ooh. fishing. Okay, hold on. Hold, 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 hold. Uh, how about the Shogun Dan Henderson fight? Shogun Dan number one. Oh, thank well, you. Well, that the first fight that it's yeah. in there. Yeah. They're not in rank and order. These are just some of the fights. Yep. So you got Gus Finn, you got John Jones. This is just UFC, right? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, just UFC. Not uh, no, fights. Bellator too. <laughs> no, uh, Bellator and, uh, and Pride. World, World Series. And Pride. Yeah, give me some of the best of World Series. Hold on, hold, hold. Just UFC. God right. damn it. Um. Okay, so we got those two. Shit, uh, there's, a, there's a lightweight in there somewhere, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Why am I... Frankie Edgar. Great oh, Maynard. Oh, my God, that was great. Two. Yes. Yes. Got to go with that. That was a draw, by the way. And there's another draw in there. This is the other one I'll give you. There's another draw in there. Is BJ in there? Nope. Um, Misty, no. No. Oh, Bigfoot. Uh, Bigfoot Hunt? Bigfoot yeah. Hunt. Which is weird to me because one test pause for steroids is tough. Yeah. It's a good fight, though. Great heavyweight How fight. How about the Sonnen Anderson Silva first one? No. Where he laid and prayed, and then at yeah, the very yeah. end he got submitted? Yeah. How about no, Brian? All right. Um, <laughs> all right. Shit, there's one more I'm missing. What about the Brendan Schaub Andre Arlovsky? That's like asking about. <laughs> <laughs> is that um, in there? Um, what, what is the, what's the final one? Uh, Bigfoot, Hunt, 
um, Shogun, Dan, Gustafin, John Jones, um, Frankie Edgar. Oh, uh, Frankie Edgar, Gray Maynard, too. And then um, Chad Mendez, Aldo, too. That's what I'm doing after this. Would you like me to go through it, Brian? No, thank you. Any other brain busters? Uh, please, while we're talking about fighting, let's, let's jump over. Come see me in Edmonton uh, at the comic strip this uh, April. Is there a way you could say a little more energy? I'm not going to go see that. Wait, I'm a fan listening. Come see Brian Callen at the comic strip in Edmonton. We sell out so quickly. I doubt uh, that. Jen. We do, actually. It's, yeah. my, it's my market. But um, come see me uh, April. What is it, Brennan? April uh, 7th and 8th. It's no 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. 9th through the 12th. Yeah. Edmonton. Edmonton. Brian Gallon, Edmonton. I'm tearing it up. Canada. I'm excited. It's Canada. Bring your old school Wayne Gretzky jersey. Brian will sign them. That's right. Shooting my special in June, Brennan Chubb. Where at? Irvine Improv. June Irvine what? Improv. I will announce it. I'm not sure yet. We've got several dates. We're looking at them. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I'm excited. And then I start from scratch. Do you have anything else to announce that you don't know about? Fire and the Kid show on live mainstream television when? We have no idea. <laughs> Any time in the next 10 I, years. I was listening. That's what you're doing. I was listening. I was like, huh? Was this an, is that an announcement? Hey, I'm taking over for Jimmy Fallon down the road when? Not sure. It's just a goal. It's but a, I, I want to announce it now. It's a goal. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes. Speaking of goals, getting down to 205, B-Shop's got a nutritionist. Nutritionist Ooh. in the house. Nutritionist so, in the house. So did you talk to your nutritionist? Yeah, I did. What did he Let say? Give him a shout out real quick. Go ahead. What, what, Carry on. What did he say to you when you said, I walk around at 250, I want to lose 45 oh, pounds? Oh, real quick. I just weighed in at uh, 256, by the way, after oh my birthday my weekend. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> I am Chubby McChubbers. 51. Still got this pounds. fat ass dick. All right. 51 pounds, ladies and gentlemen. The winner, the winner, the guy who is giving me the opportunity to cut a bunch of weight, Anthony P. Ocampo Jr. Why did you choose him? You know what? A lot of guys reach out to me. I had a ton of guys reach out to me, and all of them seem qualified, but this guy, and I talked to four guys on the phone. Several guys through email. This guy was just consistent, and he seemed motivated. And at the same time, when I talked to him, these other guys were like trainers. They were tra trainers, or they had a clothing business on the side. Yeah. This guy's like, this is all I do. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? He's like, all I do is transform people. I'm like, oh, well, you like write a workout plan? He goes, no, 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 you're missing the thing here. I'm a nutritionist. I transform bodies. What you do with your workout, with your trainers, your business. The, I a master at helping people lose weight and doing it correctly. And I cook your every meal. I cook your foods Monday he through Friday. Meal. Wow. He's like, this is all I do. I specialize in helping people lose weight, especially athletes. Damn. I said, you, sir, are on board the big brown train. Big brown train. P.S. It's a crazy train. I'm a diva. I hope you wait. I got are you ever. I'm a diva. Hope wait till I'm losing weight. Hope you don't mind your buddy elbowing in. Elborn, oh, you know, he, he, he's a fan of the show. He's going to listen to this. He goes, uh, tell Brian I could probably help him. He's looking like shit lately. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I need your help. I need your help. No, don't try jumping on this Come train. On, I need him me... focused on me. I want to get in I there. I need him focused on me. I want me. some muscle. I want to get I want to get buff. I want to get swole. You're 50. If, it's, if, if it didn't happen the previous 50 years, in, nice in your glory days, after 50, it ain't happening. No, it's going to happen. We, we need you at a TRT clinic. No way. Why? I don't need it. You don't need it. I'm afraid. I think my body works really you, well right now. Let me get like a, I have let a lot me of get energy. This. You're afraid of TRT, but you do a free show at the Scientology building. Hey, you son of a bitch. What the fuck? It was fuck? for charity. Yo, yeah. TRT. I just so worry, they can pay I worry all that I'll become dependent on it. I just want to be, like, I feel like my, my dong works well and I have a lot of energy. Better would work. I'd, be, I'd be thicker. But every time I see guys on TRT, they look, <laughs> their skin gets a little purple and they just look a little too. Well, those are, see, the, but I think you're c confusing that with steroids. Okay. One, there's Testosterone a versus yes, deca there's anabol or some yes, shit. Big difference. Human growth. Huge difference. Yeah, I don't know if I need any more testosterone, my friend. I'm barely holding it together right now. But you, well, your hairline's barely holding it together. Well, That's I'd what I'm trying. Lose my I'm, hair, I, Brian. My hair is, looks. My hair looks lush, and and I'm a Keely. 
Let's just. I'm, I'm glad you came. I'm Keely, glad you came. Get on the listen, mic. I've been watching a lot of intervention lately. I'm gl- listen. Oh, no. You're in a room. It's people a hair people love you. People love you. Hairline Everyone here loves you. Brendan, would you like to start? Yes, I would. Your hairline has affected me in the following reasons, Brian, in your shitty body. When you walk into the studio, mm. I get sad every <laughs> single day. Your hair, your and you, hair makes you me do sad. nothing about it. Hey. If you continue to treat your hair like this in your body, I will no longer be your friend oh. or hang out with you at Scopa. Hold it together. I don't believe your tears, though. It looks really? like you're smiling. <laughs> I, I'm smiling. <laughs> Intervention. I have an audition today. I have to cry. Really? Yeah. Well, let's work on it. At four. What's the yeah. what, what's the what's the pitch? What's it's the deal? Masters here? of Sex, the TV show. Good show, big yeah. show. I tested for that show, didn't get it. Didn't get um, it. So, but now they called you back. Yeah, for a heavy recurring role, and I have to. Uh, it's heavy. I can't really divulge what happens because. Well, can you I'm get? Well, let's work on it right now. I'll tell you how it's gonna go. I'll tell you right now if you're gonna get the part. Really? I've been in this business a long time. Okay. Two years. Not All even. right, so. Scenario. Let's give me the scenario. Who, what am I? You, and you can make it up so you don't give away the plot. But what am I? What's my role in this? Your role is a coach, and it's time for me to hang it up as a football player, and because I got a I got a gimp foot. So I'm Joe Rogan. Ah shit. Yeah, that's a little too close to home. Maybe. No, it doesn't matter. No, yet. we can do this. All right. And how old are you though? I'm like uh, I'm 30. Oh, so you're a pro. I'm a pro, and I'm 36, and it's just getting to a point where. We're going to need you to st- but you love pretend me. to cry. All right. All right. Coach, how you doing, man? Want to talk to me? I'm good. I'm good. Good. I was just running last. Got to stay healthy. My foot's giving me a little trouble. I just want you to know, though, I've been icing it up, and I'm, I'm going to be ready for a Sunday's game. I'm kind of excited. And I want to say something else. Uh, you're like a dad to me, Coach. I don't know what I'd do without you. I love you. What do you want to talk to me about? I, I love you, too. I love ha. you, too. I love you, too. I love you, too. And this I, is great. I, I see you've been working hard. Bring it in. No, no, just... Uh. Oh, Back the fuck up. What happened? Out. First time Back you didn't want to hug me. Yeah, you're too touchy feely for All me. All right. Listen, I've been mean to tell you. You're losing the weight there, huh? <laughs> Look at that little paw there. You're looking good. Hey, whoa, whoa, hey. That's somebody's shy. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Just whoa. calm the fuck down. Hey, I, you have too much touch, energy. Touch your dick, you have too much <laughs> energy. <laughs> you're a terrible football player. You're a terrible football, you player. football I know you player. What? Terrible. Huh? Listen, we've been talking, and you're terrible. And your foot? It's just my foot, Coach. I mean, I'm running patterns out of it. We have we have other kids with two feet. Sure, coach, but I mean you We're know healthy. I'm an arch. I'm an ice in my arch. You just give me a chance, coach. I know I know I've been good. I know I've been a little slow off the off, off the ball. It's <laughs> over. Huh? It's over, Brian. Oh, sure. I'll, I'll sit the bench for this game, but maybe next game. No, 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 no. It's over, over. It's a game of inches, and there's one problem. You suck, coach. I, I like my I like my foot. Coach. You can't kick me out of here. You're out. Coach. You're out. Coach. Stop, <laughs> Bubbles. Stop. I'm going to kill you. Go, go, go. Wow. Uh, yeah. Wow, that really Fuck escalated. You. Fuck you. That escalated. Wow. That's called a plot point. I'm going to kill you. Boom, boom, boom. I shot you. Uh, oh. Notice how I cry. Uh, uh, just uh, snot, shitty cry, uh, and I fart because I'm I'm so upset. Uh, no, I'm you sorry. just don't care. No, I just shit. I'm shitting in your office, coach. <laughs> Worst player, ever. Worst player ever. Cry and shit in his office and leave. <laughs> this is for you, you coach. See ya. Well, fuck your game. <laughs> fuck your game. I'm out. I'm out. I shoot I could you. have been the next Jerry Rice. I shoot you you're, in the knee. You're 30. It's, up, it's over. <laughs> uh, hard knocks. That's, that, 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 when you watch those shows, when the guy just gets that slip, bring your playbook, you're done. You just not learn the plays enough. Oh, yeah. I was that guy. Twice. Oh. I was that guy. Twice. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> that's got to hurt your feelings. That's Huh? <laughs> oh, you want to talk about, oh, and, and you can't oh. cry because you're around all your friends? Oh, shit. And, and you, well, you think your friend. You get real close. Dude, and you're camp. emotional. You know me. You get real close in camp, so you know you get you get you're like buddy buddy with the guys, and then you hear them going around knocking on the door. You're like, good. Well, hope they don't knock on this one. And then they get to your door, and it's all I'm like, God damn. I hope I hope they send Tyrone home. Like, job, coach wants to see you. Grab your playbook. And you know right there. Oh yeah, it's over. 
Oh, there. And your buddy's like, buddy's like, damn, sorry, man. Don't, you'll get picked up, though. You, Bro, you'll get picked up. Yeah, easily. everybody has this happen. Yeah, dude, think about it. Kurt Warner got cut like several times. Like, yeah. Oh, well, I don't Thanks play quarterback. for the hard case. It makes play, a bad law. I don't play quarterback, but yeah. yeah. Okay, and man. And Bernard Hopkins played, fought to his and, and then you're trying not to cry. And then the coaches, it, they break you down real. I mean, they break, they, they're pros at it. They're black belts in it. Like, listen, you're a great player. Just not what we need right now, you know? Like, you can play in this league, but just, you know, we're, ju- we're just not, you're not what we need right now. I mean, who knows? We might pick you up uh, you know, on waivers. Who knows? But uh, keep your head up. Keep training. If we need you, we'll give you a call. So they leave you with this little glimmer of hope because they don't want you to freak out. God bless They you. don't want the circus elephant freaking out. <laughs> you're, you're they don't big. want you freaking out. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, there's a chance you'll pick back up. He's like, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, you never know. You could, but we're, we're like, going like to send you back to Denver. Four and then, of our starters could, could die, and then you'll be really Yeah, like if the, the, if the team was flying to Cleveland and it crashed, <laughs> like, yeah, maybe we'll give you a call. Like, uh, well, that could happen. Oh, so. God. So they give you this little glimmer of hope. And you just go home, head hung low. Oh, I, cry, I cried on the way. And I bet the cab driver was like, what the fuck? Because, you know, they take you to the airport. Oh, <laughs> oh man, because yeah. you give it your all. Oh, you're talking about my dream since I was four in the oh, NFL? Jesus Christ. That dream? Do, you have, do, do people hear this like, you know, you have a good life and you're a successful guy by all measures and continue to be. But when you think back on what it took, the amount of like just disappointment, the amount of like climbing up, the, the, the people don't realize like I think personally and not to compare it, but I, I have to say, I told you the time I cried the hardest was when I lost the class A's in wrestling and as a high school wrestler on my way back on the bus I took third instead of first and I was supposed to take first I've never cried harder in my fucking life this is the and difference I can't though. imagine this is the it's difference my career though. I'm yes. an adult I, I can't imagine but at least 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 what, what are you 14 then I was 18 Jesus yeah. so okay yeah. I well, took it hard well yeah, I mean, you're 18 competing with younger kids but no that's, that's, uh, no, 18, we'll just, no 18 a senior in high school yeah Okay, yeah. so you're 18. Competing against other so, seniors, so please, please. At least when you're. But uh, still. No, like, listen. At least, at least when you're a senior, you have other options. You're going to college. Your sure. whole life is ahead of you. When you've been eyeing and planning on to play in the NFL since you were four. <laughs> four. It's your career choice. No, no, no. You don't get it. It's your life. Oh my and then because wrestling's not your life. No. You knew that from a very young age. And it age. still killed me. When you're a football player and you're a star in high school. You're really good in college. You assume the next step is the NFL. You've been dreaming about it since you're a kid. You're doing all the right things. You know how you can stack up with other guys. Oh, and then just literally your dreams are shut right there. I don't think there's – and there's very few people in this world who get that feeling. I don't think there's – I don't know how to describe it. Oh, well, it's I mean, weird. You've been it's weird. Through, you especially have – I mean, I'm sorry to bring this back, but I remember in Taekwondo I got knocked out. My buddy Roundhouse kicked me in the chin. I didn't cry. I got home to my girlfriend, and I was holding the thing. She goes, what happened to your chin? And it was a huge cut. The minute she, she goes, oh, my God. And I, and I, I started crying, and I said, I'm not good, and I, and I want to be really good. Like, I remember the, the, at, at, I was 20 or something, and I remember crying and, think, and saying to her, I said, I just want to be good at life, and I just wasn't. I, I, everything was a failure in a way. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, what, you, you, yeah, you, you try so that's, hard, that's and I know a, I'm not comparing yeah, it. I'm just yeah. saying – on a small scale, those defeats when you're trying to be like, what was that thing where somebody said you spend most of your life working really hard to win at something and you lose anyway. And I think that's basically what human effort is about. And so, so when I see with you at 30, putting everything on the line, football and then UFC and yeah, you're a very successful guy getting knocked out or getting beaten or hit in a fight like that is so personal. It's your career. It's, it's got to be just It's not impossible. even about getting hit. And I wish you could bottle that heartbreak and have everyone f- share it because I guarantee if you can bottle that heartbreak that I had against Travis Brown that night yeah. because it wasn't that I lost. That sucks, right? That's the worst. It was That was the first time in my entire life at 32 years old I realized I will never be the heavyweight champ of the world. And it's the only reason but I see, do. But I, I, that's incredible to me. Like, that, like – so if you could bottle God that, damn. if you could bottle that feeling and just be like, oh, this is how Brendan felt after he lost Travis Brown, all that hard work, the podcast you listen to, 
here just just if it, if it was like a usb and you could plug it into a body you're like this is what brendan felt like when he realized he'll never be the world champ of the ufc and it's his biggest dream if you could just plug that into a human body and then add to that no no if you could just plug that into a human body i promise you the entire world would never hate on you on social media they would they would never make bad comments towards you they would see you in the streets. They would hug you. If you could take that heartbreak of realizing that. Well, because you try. I know how hard you worked at it. And, and I think that part of it is just when you're the kind of person that wants, has the imagination to want what a lot of people would consider the impossible or want to be at the top of the mountain. And there's only one place for that. And you're, the, you're that kind of person, which is what I've always loved and respected about your effort is that when you're that kind of person and you continue to put it on the line like that, and then, like you said, when you realize that, I didn't, this is the first time I've ever heard you say that. Yeah. But um, I, I don't know, man. It just feels like, you. yeah, like you said, it'd be impossible to, to hate on you when, when it'd be, you know it, that it, that's, it literally, that's what you continue to literally do your be whole life. It'd be impossible for someone to, to hate on you. It just is. But they, they, it's not, that's not the way it works. Add to that, by the way, Rogan saying retire. No, but, you, but the, th- is the thing about Rogan, people are like, God, you took that so well. You Man, I, I would have, you should have lashed out for him. Pe- some people were mad at me like, I wish you would have stuck up for yourself. Listen, I'm a very smart dude. You know this. I'm a very educated, smart dude. You don't think that crossed my mind? You think Rogan's the first person in my life to bring up retirement? No one, no one knows. Listen, Rogan has seen you a, bring it up to yourself. Ro, Rogan has seen a, more fights than anyone in the business. He's he's called more fights than anyone in the business. He's a black belt when it comes to that stuff. I'm in the game, man. I know the game. Yeah. No one knows the game better than I do. I have a fucking successful podcast after two years. We're, there's no bigger MMA podcast. We don't consider ourselves MMA podcast because we destroy every MMA podcast. I know the game, man. There's a reason why this show's gone so good, right? Yeah. So when it comes to you don't think I, that crossed my mind, R- Rogan wasn't bringing anything to me that I didn't already think. Yeah, yeah. Not at all. So when he said it, the reason I didn't lash out, I, I hate going back to this, but we're just talking real here. Yeah. The reason I didn't lash out is because, A, it's already crossed my mind. B, I've said since the day I got into the UFC, the day I, I, I'm champ and I lose it, I'm going to retire. The day when I realize I won't be champ, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I've always said that. Yeah, I know. I've always, always, always said that. Yep. So after Travis Brown fight, I, I remember we went back to the locker room. I The hardest I've ever cried. <clears throat> and all my coaches were like, what's the deal? And I just looked up with them like, listen, man, you'll get back on the horse. You, no one takes Travis down. You took him down twice. You know, everyone's trying to be all positive. I'm like, no, you don't get it. It's not about Travis. Travis yeah. is a monster. Who knows if Travis will even be world champ? Don't get it twisted. Right. The chances of any of us being world champ are not good. No. The odds are stacked against you. So right. it's not like I'm saying anything new here. But I just remember looking up at all my coaches and being like, this is the first time in my life I've ever realized – I'll never be world champ, heavyweight world champ. God damn. That's crazy. I never heard you say that. Yep. Yeah, your honesty is um, is very refreshing. It's pretty rare, man. Fuck. I, I don't know. I, I think that's why I love fighting so much, and, and I, especially MMA, and why I respect it so much. I just think it's the hardest thing in the world in a lot of ways. The, the, other, really thing, the other thing, too, is <clears throat> people are like, oh, Shab's stupid with his money. Look at his Porsche. Look at the place he bought. Look at his watches, blah, blah, blah. No, man, what you guys don't realize is I've done professional sports basically all my life. College, all, you know, obviously that's amateur. We should get paid anyways. But then pro football, UFC, mixed martial arts. There's no certainty with any of it. No. There's no certainty. So I kept everything ch- close to my heart. I kept all my cash, everything super close. Well, guess what, everybody? For the first time in 32 years, I have, I finally have. A little money. Something no, not not even money. I've always had money. Yeah, I I have I have something stable. Right, I have something stable. This show. Yeah, that's and guess what? Let's let's say and this would never happen. I love Fo- I do. I fucking love Fox. I'm Fox to the day I die, man. I lo- the things they've done for us. I love Fox. Well, let's say Fox is like Brian and Brendan are too much. Those guys are too much. Let's say a new Fox executive comes in and is like, God, I love Fox, but you know what? I can't stand the fight in the kid. 
uh, Brian, Brian and Brendan tag team my daughter. Who knows? Okay. Some some random bullshit. Sure. Which we'd never do. I'm just trying to be funny. The, the guy was getting heavy. So <laughs> he's like, Brendan and Brian tag team my daughter. I hate the final <laughs> kid. I'm cutting him. Cool, man. For the first time in my life, cool. You Guess what? Him. Guess what, my man? Oh, the million downloads we get a month? They follow Big Brown and the kid wherever they go. This is the first time you've had life. stability. This is the first ever time you've life. ever had fucking stability. People are like, oh, Brent's going through a midlife crisis. Nah. Fucking flourishing, my man. That's I really have st- funny. stability for the first Isn't time Isn't that in my amazing? Life. God, it's got to feel good. Your life has been so high stress. What? I mean, I saw it. I watched it. The, 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 to get that close to somebody on, uh, you know, and, and really in the game the way you were, and are I took you with me on to, the voyage? It's unbelievable to and watch. I, but the, this thing, I try taking people and, with me. I try taking our listeners with me. That's yeah. why this works. Yeah, man, it's it's a really it's because I want because some people don't have the opportunities I've had. Some people don't have the skills I have. So for them to feel like part of the journey, it's just so authentic, a little bit, man. It's so authentic. Yes. It's it's so human. And I think that, like I said, you don't have to be a, re- a fighter on your level to understand that heartbreak. All everybody has heartbreak. Everybody has had expectations. And they really put everything into those expectations. Could be just a girl or a guy you're in love with, whatever. But that's kind of what it is when you realize it's not going to happen. And but, and, but and guess man, what? It's personal. But it's super personal. But it's also like someone say, you know, you meet those guys all the time. Like, yeah, I, I had a full ride scholarship to Florida State, but I fell in love with this girl and I ended up seeing her, so I didn't take it. I could have been the NFL though, man. I could have done it. We hear about those guys all the time, or. Uh, you know, I, I went to prison, so I didn't get a chance to be in, compete in the UFC, blah, blah, blah. But there's no concrete time in history where you can say, this is the exact point when, when I have kids, I'd say, listen, Brendan Jr., here's the exact time in my life my d- dreams were crushed. Check it out. Hit play. Well, what, I'd way rather have a dad who, who like that. Who else can do it? I'd way rather have a dad like that who can navigate, who can – look, you and I know, at, 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 certainly at my age – you are not going to go through this life as a successful person without having to confront defeat Failures? after defeat and failure after failure and, 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 and being having at one point in your life at least being crushed. And one point, if, if, you're not, if you don't have moments of failure, multiple moments of failure, you're not trying hard enough. There you go. That's you're not it. going against tough that's enough so competition. That's so true, man. And that's whether that's business Fighting, relationships. Acting, whatever it might be, man. What, uh, well, acting, what? Failures? That's Crazy. all this world is. That's it. Fighting's failures, man. Yeah. Fighting yeah. is failing. Yeah. Baseball, what? Yeah. I hit three out of ten. I'm in the Hall of Fame. Isn't that crazy? I'm striking out seven yeah. out of ten. Yeah. That's failing. Yeah. And if you get comfortable in failure, and more importantly, if you get comfortable, not what I mean by getting comfortable in failure is realizing that's all part of the process to getting to the top. You just, 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 just mark it. Feel it and keep moving forward, and more importantly, adjust your approach. Keep adjusting well, your the, approach. The cl- cliche saying that we see on Instagram all the time or Twitter, which I hate when people put inspirational quotes and they're not successful. <laughs> it's weird to me. Like I'll, like I'll follow some people. I'm like, bro, some hot girl who's like some hot shape. girl who has some sugar daddy. She'll be like, if you think today was hard, wait till tomorrow. Keep grinding, girl. I'm like, well, well okay. Yeah, you You're keep, sugar baby. You keep grinding. You're sugar baby. You keep you grinding. Keep sucking that dick and getting freaking <laughs> Louis, Louis Vuitton. You know, it's like for sure. Quit putting up. Quotes. That's a lot of work. Actually, but though. you know, they always say it's not how many times you get knocked down. It's not how many times. It's how many times you get up. Yeah. Well, that's you, for life, man. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. for life. Yeah. Get comfortable in it. Keep moving forward. Keep fucking moving. Forward. Yeah. You don't think I've gotten up from this Travis Brown fight? What? Fucking flourishing. <laughs> you really Going have. chill. Going chill. You fucking. Have. I love you guys. It's the fans, man. I do it for the fans. Do let's, it for the fans. Let's go to fan questions. Fan, fan questions. questions. By the way, everybody, we may have some intro, some professional intros coming your way soon. So just be ready. First, let's kick off this edition of fan questions with a uh, reply. Oh, All right. It's a uh, reply. Re- uh, creep line. That'll work. I, I don't do. I like yours better. Yeah, mine's super creepy. You, you just you shake. Long creep line. Creep line. Oh, oh your eyes and your I, lips. I go, are I go one lazy eye. Oh. I go a strong mouth. A heavy lid. You look like you're having a. You had a stroke. Like you have Bell's palsy. Oh, God. 
<laughs> Give it to me one time, Brandon. Rape line. Oh. And dick flopped on the oh. table. And it's all, it looks like a zombie dick. Yeah, just a big old veiny, veiny sea cucumber. Purple and what, uh, what'd you do uh, to that thing? Carry on. Too much. So, <laughs> this, this fighter in the kid episode's creep line is from at Champlain. At fighter in the kid. I hold doors open for girls a little too far away so I can see their boobs bounce when they jog up. <laughs> Hashtag, is that creepy? <laughs> I think that's fucking 100%. genius. <laughs> I call you a genius and a gentleman, you, sir. You, sir, are an innovator. I am proud of Thank you. Thank you. And guess who's going to be holding the door way too early for everybody? The old creepy so hairy guy. Ah, oh, here you go. <laughs> Don't put a little pep in your step, honey. I can't be here all day. <laughs> Hey, pepper that hey, step, quickly, up. huh? The wind's getting up. Let's go. Pull a pepper in that step. A little pepper in your step, huh, sweetheart? Ain't got all day, me and Brendan holding it both. Ain't got all day. She's all, I, I'm, I'm too far away. Pepper it up. Pepper it up. No, just, just pull a little pepper in your step, lady. We're holding here. I step it. I step it. Hold the bottom of your tits if you have to. <laughs> <laughs> got a couple of fun bags on you, huh? Uh, butt kicks. Butt kicks to the door. No, I'm too far. I can't make it. Butt kicks. Build your fast twitch. Let's go. I'll, I'll, I'll whistle. Run to that. Run to that tempo. <laughs> now, 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 when we get to the parking lot, we see a hot chick. We just book it. Like, where are they running? We get to the door. Let's go. Hurry up. Looks like one of them just popped out of your bra. There. Let me let me help you out with that thing. Let me let me, let me wedge that back in. <laughs> Brandon, don't suck on it. That's weird. What if I did that? Come on, let's go. Up up yourself. I wish people could see your fucking mouth. Big you old look like lips. a horse. My big old lips. I got a couple. I got a set of DSLs on me. You look like a goddamn ant eater when you do that. Keep that guy away from an ant mound. Anyway. <laughs> see what? Right. Right. Little pep in your step, sweetheart. Hey, what are you no, doing? Ju just go off way too far away. Do no, the wait. We got all day. Do the art mark again. <laughs> I call uh, these things DSLs in the hood. That's, that stands for dick sucking lips. Oh, DSLs. I should have yeah, done that. Because they're thick, Brian. Ooh, if I was gay, I'd be killing the game. Killing the game, and you're not gay, and you're still killing the game because you've probably had experiences when you were drunk in college. Absolutely the big, not. Thick guy who is clearly a little bit gay. Hey, hey, is that a dick? Big, thick guy I'm gonna right. suck your Keep dick. Keep going. Whoa. All right. Let's save that for later. Whoa. Sorry. Whoa. Sorry, guys. So thanks, Champlain, for. Uh, for the creep line edition, keep them coming, folks. We love the creep. The hashtag. We love creep the creep line lines. I, I have some some crazy ones. I have some crazy ones. If they're a little too long for Twitter, feel free to send an Instagram post to myself or Brendan or Brian or a video. We'll see. Um, you. Or yeah. a video or, of you doing. I don't know. Creep line video could go down. Hashtag a really girls dark road. only send yes. to Brendan. Girls send to Brendan. Guys send to Evan. Yeah, Brian. just send us anything, anything creepy uh, that you have. Video calls only, please. Uh, let's see, feel free, feel free, seriously, any of our fans to send whatever video that you think would be creepy and any with nudity, girls only, please. And uh, <laughs> we'll just go from there. All right. Uh, all right. Seriously, I want everybody. to No, feel guys, welcome. listen. We want to hear all your creepy stories. Yeah. Uh, hot girls send to me. Uh, yeah, and listen, yeah, if yeah. if they're good, we will play them on this. Hot girls only. Uh, yeah. Just know that know that seriously, all fans are welcome to send in whatever they want as far as a creep video or just a video in general. Girls only, of course. <laughs> and uh, yeah, right. no, it's not a big deal. Like, we do not discriminate discriminate at no. all. The guys, gals, whatever you want, girls only, Scientology, it, whatever, yeah. uh, whatever girls, you want to do. Girls in their twenties. Uh, keep going. <laughs> Over 40 do not apply. What? No. Uh, Unless, no you're Unless you're in really good shape. Unless you're in really good shape. If you're in really good shape and you're a MILF, go ahead and send and those in too. And you're dirty as shit. And you're dirty. And you're bone. And you're a total pervert. And, um, you, and, <laughs> and you live in the LA area code. I'm please sorry. send video and address dirty, to please, Dirty, dirty shit. Show. Dirty shit. No, please. please. I mean, listen. We will take be, anyone. Be, be, be tasteful. Dirty as shit, please. <laughs> Uh, please keep it respectful. No, keep it respectful. Uh, but naked only, please. I, I don't uh, no, care if I have to throw up. Come on, on those. No, listen, we don't want anything funny dick pics, okay? Uh, <laughs> listen, come on. Dick pics only if they're huge and they make me feel bad about myself. <laughs> um. <laughs> no, seriously, girls, guys, yeah. let's keep it seriously, classy. Seriously, no dick pics unless it stretches way past your belly button. And, uh, <laughs> I have to see it because I'm just curious. Uh, seriously, you guys, come on. Seriously, though. Only if it's wrist thick, wrist thick, wrist thick. Uh, keep going. All right. All right, next question. Sorry, next we question. Actually, we actually go into the next question? Oh, yeah. Or? Okay. All right, this one is from Tom Reyes. If you were getting roasted, what comedians or celebrities would you have to do it? I mean, I, I, there are people Steven that I think are the funniest. Awesome. My friends, Will Sasso, Chris D'Elia. 
Kevin Hart. Whitney Cummings. Those guys crack me up. Whitney Cummings. Whitney Cummings. You would have a murder Brad, as Brad well. Ernst stuff. David Off. Those guys are all great. Whitney R- Whitney uh, wrote for most of the roasts, so she's yeah. a beast at it. Usually she has been on them too. She's on Donald Trump one stuff like that. I'd have Whitney. I'd have Brian. I'd have Dove. I'd have Rogan. I feel like Rogan be really mean as a roaster. Uh, great though. He'd be really good. Yeah, Rogan would be great. Rogan would be Definitely good. Definitely have Rogan. He knows me so well. He would kill me. Might have Mark Marin up there. Yeah. A fan of his show. Yep, there you go. Let's get Mark on the show. We'll invite him on. He can come on? I, I think we'd have to go to him. Yeah. You know, probably. he doesn't have athletes on his podcast. He doesn't? I'd change his mind. Uh, maybe, somebody maybe, somebody tweet maybe, maybe he'll have you and me on as a tag team because yeah, yeah he, he generally doesn't have athletes on. Not a fan of the athlete, from what I hear. I love Mark Maron. If you guys uh, listen to the Fire Kid and you listen to Mark Maron, let's get the Fire Kid on Mark Maron. Yeah, let's get him on. He's open for it. I watch his show, too. Yeah. I like Mark. I've known him for 20 years. 25. All right, next one is from Chadwick Rollins. wants to know if the fighter and the kid got a sports bar. What would it look like? Ooh. Look like it Patty's have, Pub. Have a trampoline, <laughs> 100% a trampoline and a heavy bag. Um, it'd have a wrestling mat so I could practice my moves. Um... And it would have very good wine and very good food. Good so, coffee. Yeah, ridiculously good. Have a coffee bar with the best coffee. It'd have the Fire and Kid merchandise in the back. Yeah, 100%. It'd have ridiculous coffee, ridiculous wine bar. All the waitresses would be smoke shows. Smoke shows. That guy. That would include guys and girls. You uh, a couple be, studs. Yeah, it can't be all studs. girls. No, you got to stud guys, stud girls. Let's open a Let's open a Fighter and the Kid bar. That's a great idea. A place where we would hang out. Yeah, a money pit. We'll get the oh, you mean, or 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 or, or <laughs> a, money a money pit. We'll or we sh- or it's all terrible. Restaurants are the worst business to invest in. Or uh, we could just hang out at Scopa and they pay. Yeah, the I was gonna say. Or we get the we get we the just go to Scopa. Scopa and we get the, the no yeah. no we don't create our own. We just go to Scopa in our finding the kid. There you go. Where? Yep. Good call. People hit me up all the time. They're going to Scopa. I say, ask for the Big Brown Special. That's it. The Big Brown Special, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the uh, squash blossoms, mm-hmm. by the way. Mm-hmm. Squash blossoms. My favorite. Uh, sorry. I'm hungry right now. I didn't eat today. Dude, I'm starving. I had that bullshit nature bar. Yeah. Do you want to eat after this? I do. I have to be in Hollywood at 2.30. I got to work on this audition. Let's go. You got to cr- cry, though. Yeah, I do. Think of mm-hmm. think of the time mm-hmm. when you're like, Dad, I need $100,000 for down payment. He was like, no. Oh, God. That's how, that's, how rich Dad, kids, that's how rich kids do it. Huh? Why, you asshole? By the way, a lot more than 100000 Dad, give me five hundred grand. Um, yeah, give me a million. He's like, no, only eight hundred thousand. <laughs> You're fucking mean, man. You're mean. Go on. You're let's, fucking mean, Dad. Let's stay on the impressions. This one's from at Firat Caker. Bring it. And if Morgan Freeman, Brian Callen, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, Brendan Shaw, well, yeah, uh, had a conversation, what would they say to each other? All right. Hey, Morgan. Uh, yeah. Hey, Morgan, how you doing? I'm well, thanks very much. I think at the end of the day, you spend too much time in the weight room. Well, you you look like a girl, Morgan. I'm you look tall. like shit. I'm an ugly girl. Come on, do it. Try me. Work out with me. Do it. I don't Come on, that. do it now. I win Oscars. Why would I work out with you? Cause you look like shit. You look like little girl. I'm I'm a tall. Come on, do it. Work out with me. I'm a six foot three, seventy three. I'm a six foot three, seventy three year old. You play the man. same role in every movie. No. You're the same guy. I have a lot Come of on, money. do it. Work out with me. You're the actor I am, you'll never be the artist I am. I still make way more money. Come on, do it. I can't understand what you're saying. Speak English. Lift our weight, come on. Go out, be fun. Go and eat some meat. All I do is eat meat and calm and pump. Why don't you walk into the ocean and keep walking until you die? You're mean. <laughs> this is hurting my feelings, Morgan. I don't think you have feelings. Why don't you go why don't you go to go to the beach and walk? When you speedo, show off that old droopy body, and keep walking until you disappear into the ocean. Morgan, come on! You're hurting my feelings! And when your body washes up on shore, I'll piss on it. <laughs> well, Morgan, you know what? What? Fuck you! Ah. Ah, ah. You're not hurting me at all. I, ah. won't, I won't lose my composure. Say what the nail my ass! I'll die just like this. There it is. <laughs> there it is, ladies and gentlemen. It's very good, dude. Thank all you, right. ladies and gentlemen. 
I'm 100% banking. Hey, how about you walk into the ocean and just keep walking until you die? <laughs> I'm banking that for future years. That's just rough. keep walking until you die. It's just, it's just so, it's short and to the point. It's so creative. mean. Come on, work out with me. Morgan got mean so quickly. Morgan's an asshole. Morgan's wow. a real dick. Jeez. Morgan doesn't fuck around. Could have worked out with the best of all time. Oh, all right. Oh, we're going to wrap on this one. Uh, it's from the same guy. He I submitted two fire questions. I didn't realize it was from the same dude. Superstar. Virat Kaker again. Spider and the kid, you guys are in a chopper that is crashing down. What are your last words to each other? Oh, that's a good it question. Goes, it, it goes for all of us. All right. My last words? Yeah. I know what I say. Hey, bro, you're welcome for the fighter and the kid. You know what I'd say? I think I'm the only one that makes CNN. Fuck you guys. <gasps> that's so funny you say that. That's fucked up. <laughs> no, but that's a great... You, My father, this is my father I'm talking about. I'm the only one that can bring it up on CNN now! Oh, man. You know what I do? I go like this. As we're going down, I go, bro, cover me. And I use you as a cushion. As a, like a parachute? Yeah, I just, no, I just. I would unzip my a, pants and just show you my dick. Yeah, but I've and seen say, it. you're welcome, everybody. Oh. As the plane's just going uh, down in flames. Then I guess if you did that, my last words would be, a, it's not eight inches. You exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> you lied. Didn't we all die? How could you? My father, How dare you? My father asked me th th this question. It was, I was like, I couldn't believe he asked me. He, he said, how's your career? I go, I'm working. You know, I'm going to do this movie in Morocco, and I'm doing this TV show. And he goes, yeah. He goes, so if you die in a car crash tomorrow, what page in Variety is it on? <laughs> That's fucked up. I was man. like, hey, what kind of a question is that to ask your son, you son of a bitch? That's and I thought up. about it. I was like, gee, what page would it be on? I go, I'm writing that down. I'm going to talk about that. It's messed up. My dad, my father. I was like, hey, pop. Uh, do you mind? What page? Do you, do you think Six. you think if Six. I died in my Porsche, freaking driving out of here, the UFC is gonna have a moment of silence for the next event? Ooh, that's a good question. Do they show my highlights and turn down the lights? Oh man, yeah, I do. Yeah, probably. Let's be real. Give it up. Uh, come on, man. <laughs> I hope so. Who would you replace me with? We talk uh, about replacing you all the time. Dude. Sasso. You think? Yeah. I don't know. Sasso's amazing. Uh, maybe a floating band of people. I'd like to. I'd probably replace you with Chael Sonnen. I'd call him up and say, "Chael." His own show. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I think so. Doing else. well too. Um, I don't know, bro. Connor McGregor. He's not doing a podcast with you. No, he's not. Maybe Uriah Faber. Uriah's good. Not a bad pick. I don't know. We got Uriah on the show soon. I'd no, hold auditions. You'd have to get someone local though. Yeah. You have to come here all the time. Who would you recommend? Your eyes not local. Who would I recommend? Just Luke Rockhold so I could stare at him. <laughs> I don't know, man. You'd be fucked, let's be honest. Probably. We'd both be fucked. Probably. This Just only works one way. Fighter and a kid. Yep. There's no fighter and no kid without Brendan Schaub and Brian the Kid Callum. It's true. Ladies and gentlemen, um, are we, uh, I think we're good. I think we're good. Uh, this was fun. This was interesting. It got heavy. Yeah, but it needed to sometimes. I like that. It gets me pumped, and I think people appreciate when you throw in what you go through in your journey. And just for people to realize, don't get discouraged. It's not easy. It's a bitch. But you can set your goals, and fucking it'll happen. We, can, we, can, end, we can end on this real quick. All my family's in Denver. Every year, every year when I was in Denver, someone gets me a big chocolate bunny, and I eat it ears first. Ears first, assholes. Someone get me a goddamn chocolate Wait, bunny. Or my, or my feelings are going to be hurt. Ears first, asshole. Is this the anniversary of that time that we got you to sign the chocolate bunny and send it to that fan? It is. Because we, I eat ears year? first wow. and other people eat ass first. If you eat chocolate bunnies ass first, you need to question your life. Lose my number. Lose my number. Everyone knows you eat ears first. I, want, I, I don't like them solid chocolate. I like the hollow chocolate. All right, guys, get it done. I also love Cadbury eggs. My diet starts Monday. Figure it out. So Monday I won't be able to eat them. Uh, listen, uh, the Fire and the Kid Army, you guys buying these shirts, it's insane. You guys are the best. We did not expect this. This is the biggest order we've ever had. So hopefully everyone got their shirts. If not, no worries. You know how we do it. We always restock these things. So uh, love you guys. If you like the show, tell a friend, tell a family member, tell a cousin, tell whoever you want. Spread the word. Write a review on iTunes. We love you guys. You're the best. This is the Fire and the Kid. We're out.